Thank you, Jesus. Come fill me now. Come fill me now. Holy Spirit, fill me now. Come fill me now. Come fill me now. Holy Spirit, come fill me now. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus has a drink for you. Would you like to have a drink? Uh, Christ Jesus is calling, says, I have a drink. Would you like to have a drink? Well, some people say, no, I just had something. No, I'm full right now. I don't need anything. We had something just before we left the house. We stopped on our way. But you ask a thirsty person if they want a drink. I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to keep whatever the supply of that drink is in your hand very long. They're going to snatch it away from you. They're going to pour themselves. <laughs> Jesus said, if you drink of the water that I have for you, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this spake he of the Holy Ghost. So in other words, out of your innermost being shall flow rivers of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, listen, oh, listen. You can't drink religiously and have a river. If you drink religiously, you're just going to have religion. You, you, you can't drink of what Jesus has unless you're really thirsty. A kind of thirst that only the Holy Spirit can produce. And he wants to... It's a miraculous thing. It's a spiritual appetite. And you must understand, until men come to know Jesus, they have no spiritual appetite. Until they're born of the Spirit, there is no spiritual appetite. In fact, outside of Jesus Christ, man does not even exist. They are dead while they live. John said, he that has Christ Jesus has life. And he that does not have Christ Jesus does not have life. It's really just that simple, dear people. I see so many folks struggling for identity, struggling for purpose. Look, there is no identity and there is no purpose out of Christ Jesus, outside of Christ Jesus. You don't even live. You don't even exist. Somebody believed a lie that Satan told and said, we all God's children. No, we're not. Not until you're born to the Spirit. Your father is, of, your father is the devil. You, that's what Jesus said. That's his message. That's what he declared in John chapter 8. He looked at the re people of his day that were, they had the right religion. You know. They were part of the, supposedly part of the covenant. Of course, they just had all the ritual. They didn't have the heart. They had all the ritual. They didn't have the right. So Jesus said, you're of your father, the devil. He was a liar and you a liar too. That's a pretty radical sermon Jesus preached there, huh? <laughs> John chapter 8, pretty radical sermon, eh? People don't know about Jesus, but he's real. He's saying yesterday, day, forever. Because he's just, he's just full of truth. He's not going to play pretend. He's not going to play make-believe. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm a good to sit. You can have a seat to sit down for a little while. I'll worship with you a little bit later when you get full of the Holy Ghost. My, 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 my goal here tonight is to get you filled up with the Spirit of the living God. And then once you're full of the Holy Ghost, <laughs> then you can begin to worship the Father in spirit and truth. Otherwise, He doesn't have anything to do with it, He's not going to come around. He doesn't accept the praise of any man, except the person of no man. That's what he says. Who he accepts is Jesus. Father accepts Jesus. He's, Jesus is the only man who ever lived that did not, did not give one moment of opportunity or place to demon spirits, the powers of darkness. 
that, t- that have attempted to overthrow everything that is beautiful, wonderful, and pertains to God's love. And first of all, Satan to begin with is an absolute stock raving idiot and a madman to think he can now overthrow God, you know? But what happens when you get deceived, you know? You can believe anything once you get deceived. Anybody notice that? Isn't it wonderful to be in the Thanksgiving week? Huh? Is it wonderful to be in Thanksgiving week? You know, maybe, maybe it should be like this. Practice one solid 24 hours of doing nothing but giving thanks. Then move it to two days. Then move it to three then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight, then build your way up to 365 days a year giving thanks. Now you know you're born of the Spirit. Because that's what the Holy Ghost is always doing, is giving praise, giving thanks. And He wants to fill you with that praise and thanksgiving. He does. You know, I hear a lot of people, they talk about how they died and went to heaven. Many, many people heard that, people just died and went to heaven. I don't know whether anybody died and went to heaven uh, in these modern days. But, you know, I've heard some people, I've recently, I've recently I've, I, I mean, they died and went to heaven and came back. I'm sorry. I need to tell the whole thing. Because anybody's going to say they died and went to heaven, obviously they came back, right? So, but I just want to make sure it's clear. I don't know if anybody died and went to heaven and came back in this modern day. I don't know that. They may have. I know either way. But, you know, not too long ago, recently I heard a woman describe how this, she was dead 15 minutes. She was, she was MD, spinal doctor. And uh, she had a bit of a religion in her life, you know. She's just really busy. But she described how that she, as soon as her spirit peeled away from her body, standing all around her with these spirits. So full of compassion and, and love. And, she, and though she had a husband that she loved dearly, and she had four children she loved dearly, she didn't want to even be, she didn't even want to think about going back. She just wanted to be with them. And then Jesus appeared to her and told her, no, she has to go back because of, of, of various different reasons. And so she said, she said, the love that I experienced there, although I, everything I understood about love was my love for my children and love for my husband, the love that I experienced there for those few seconds made that love totally insignificant. I didn't want to go back. In fact, when the, when the Lord Jesus told me to go back, I said, no, I don't want to go back. Please don't. I don't want to go back. Now, see, when, people, when I hear people say that, I, I know that, that's, I know that there's, there's some truth there that they couldn't know unless something really happened. Of course, she was dead for 15 minutes. She had other medical doctors with her. They were on a kayaking trip or whatever. So they knew when she was dead, she was dead. I'm dead for 15 minutes. You know, come on. <laughs> and, um, but I know, that's tr- I know that parts of that are true. Because, see, I get to experience that love. I get to step over into a realm called the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. (laughs) What she experienced was she experienced a transition from the earth realm to a heaven realm. She didn't have to go. She didn't have to take a rocket ship. She didn't have to go to another planet. It's not somewhere far, far away. Jesus disappeared right about cloud level out of their sight. (laughs) One day the scripture says in Revelation chapter 6 that the Heavens will be rolled back like a scroll and men standing upon the face of the earth will be able to look up into heaven and they'll be able to see Jesus. They'll be able to see God the Father and Christ Jesus at his right hand. Men, men are becoming so, so rebellious, so trapped and entangled with sin and iniquity that ultimately the conclusion of that deception is this. They will actually see God and, hear, and have angels flying through the sky declaring to them the gospel of the kingdom and commanding them and telling them to repent, giving them an opportunity to even repent at that time. And the scripture says that when they are experiencing these things and seeing these things, that they cry out for the rocks. They're so rebellious that rather than repent, they would rather have the rocks fall on them and hide them from his face. Men become so like the devil. They become so other than God. They become so absolutely opposite of everything that God is. They can't and don't want to endure the beauty and the splendor of his love. Men, all, all men know is love in a sexual immorality realm. Or they know, they know, they know love in a, right now they know love in a, a family realm at best. 
I'm talking about the world, the wicked. But most men, as you see, a Western world, a Western society becoming so illicit, so immoral. I mean, it just, I mean, it is really, in reality, if that becomes my definition of love, if hate becomes my definition of love, at what, at what realm or what point does that stop? Men with men, women with women. Such ungodliness. Men with, who are married running around with all kinds of other women. Women married running around with all the other kinds of men. Every, every form of immorality and ungodliness. Every form of hate and lie and deceit. Everything that destroys the little one's hearts. The innocent's hearts. But you and I have been given an opportunity by the Holy Ghost to come into a place called love, joy, and peace. To come into a love, to know a love of Christ that passes knowledge. You, get to, you have the privilege, if you get thirsty, if you'll quit drinking from the sewers of this world and you get thirsty for the kingdom of God, you'll, be, you'll have an opportunity to experience heaven right now. You won't have to be, you won't have to have a, you know, after death experience. Because the Lord has given us access to the throne room right now. We have access to the Father by the Holy Spirit right now. The Holy Spirit has come and brought all heaven to us right now. Peace that passes understanding. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody said, well, 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 well why, can't I, why can't I experience that? Well, mind-blinding spirits, hindering spirits of darkness, which, by the way, I have total authority over. Right now, I can break every yoke. I can remove off every shackle because that's what the Holy Ghost is doing. But there's still your will because you may sit there and go, well, I don't believe that. Well, I disagree with that. I don't think that that's true. That's not my experience. Because that's what they did with Jesus. Jesus stepped into a realm. The greatest, most anointed minister that had ever walked the earth. Carrying the full capacity of everything that belonged to the power of God. And yet there were people sitting there angry with him. Wanted to kill him. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? Here you now stepped over. You could have the opportunity to step over. Huh? Into a realm that, of course, the, the woman who was classified as a sinner, because she was, she wasn't, she, she wasn't experiencing what those Pharisees and what those religious folks was experiencing. They were experiencing envy and disagreement and strife and hate and criticism. She was experiencing, because they were experiencing the realm of the demonic. Well, they interfaced with Jesus. What did she experience? She experienced heaven. She experienced that love that is so overwhelming. It cannot be compared to any other thing. It, 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 it really redefines everything. It's a whole other realm. It's so different that suddenly your love for your children is, as it were, insignificant. You're so overwhelmed with this real, true love beyond the human love. And so there, what did she do? She fell down at his feet. For the first time, she was, she was embraced with love and the goodness of God. And she began to weep. And she, she wept so much that she washed his feet with so much crying. It washed his feet. And then she took and dried them with her hair. She was kissing them. What love, huh? And, and, and what would she see? What did she see when she looked at Jesus? She, she didn't see like self-consciousness. Oh, no, what's this woman doing to me? My God, help me. You know, she, wasn't, she, was, she wasn't sitting there feeling all, you know, weird and, and, and being taken advantage of. She looked up in his face and she saw nothing but love and compassion and acceptance. She saw nothing but an invitation. Come on in. When will you come in and live and remain? When will you come and remain here? I know people come and visit. They come and visit. And, and, and if you stayed in these meetings, if I started opening up the door to have meetings every night, and you stayed in these meetings, it wouldn't be long, and you'd begin to be overwhelmed by this love. You'd go, what? what? You would say, wow, 
the pastor's got a greater anointing. Something's happening. Yeah. Well, in reality, actually, something's happening to you. Yeah. Of course, something be happening to me, too, because we have an unlimited growth potential here to come into all the fullness of God, to be filled with all of His fullness, to step into a realm such divine glory. Somebody said, well, that's tongues. No, that's the language of the Holy Ghost. Are you supposed to do that in church? Absolutely. That's how church got started. Acts chapter 2. Jesus said, you receive power. Heaven's going to come down and you're going to be baptized in heaven. You'll be baptized in my divine glory and presence. Not only will you be baptized and immersed in my divine glory and presence, but my divine glory and presence will fill you. And somebody says, I still got to sin more or less every day. There's, there's a huge disconnect here. There's a gigantic disconnect here. Okay. Now you're filled with the spirit of holiness and baptized in the spirit of holiness and you're lusting to participate with demon spirits. Wow. Where did you come up with that? What a total, complete disconnect. What a total, complete disconnect. When you step over in this realm, you don't want to go back. When you step over in this realm, you don't even want to go back to that which you love dearest, your children. Much less communion with demon spirits. Much less the activity of unholiness and ungodliness in your life. That's good, son. Come sit down. Thanks. Huh? Tonight, my heart set on a couple of things. First of all, I'm always blessed when people come to the church meeting and it's a holiday. <laughs> you know, it's amazing to me that, some, that people set priorities that are other than the seeking first the kingdom of God. I pray in Jesus' name that you'll get more hungry and more thirsty for the things of the kingdom than you've ever been in your life. And it's the greatest prayer or blessing that I could pray upon you. It's the greatest wish I could ever wish for you. Let me tell you why. Because if you get hungry and thirsty, you're going to get filled up. It's a promise from God. If you get hungry and thirsty for the things of the Spirit, to where that all of a sudden something begins to shift in your life, and it's not just a religious idea, it's not just a concept of heaven and hell, it's not just a concept of going to church and singing songs, but it becomes a life that you live, and it's abundant life, and it's an immeasurable and unlimited life. It's a life that fills you up so full that there's no room for anything else. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Within that context, within that context, you begin to get you begin to get, begin to get even that much more hungry and that much more longing for the things of heaven. And now all of a sudden, you get to begin to participate with those things that you read about in the Bible that we call the promises of God, the blessings of God. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I break the stronghold of every mind blinding spirit. Right now in the name of Jesus. I take the red blood of Jesus Christ and I put it upon every person in this place so that the sins may be cleansed, so that sins may be washed away. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of the living God, those who are in a prison of any sort, an pr emotional prison, a prison of sadness, a prison of sorrow, a prison of regret, a prison of disappointment, discouragement, Prison of sickness, a prison of weakness, a prison of addiction. I open up your prison door right now and say, come on out over here. Come walk around. Come walk around over here in this place called life and freedom right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of Jesus, I break off of you the stronghold of a desire for sin. I break off of you the stronghold of a desire for worldliness and things that belong to a realm called demonic. 
uh, things that, are around, that belong to a realm that are opposed to the living God. I break those things off of you. I break those chains off of you right now. I remove from you the deception of Satan right now in the name of Jesus so that your eyes can be open and see how beautiful and wonderful it is to abide in Him and let His Word abide in you. How wonderful it is to live in this union where the power of the living God overwhelms you, where you're baptized in His glory, living in every good thing that pertains to life and godliness, godliness, having every good and perfect gift that's come down from Father. Hallelujah. Now in Jesus' name, now in the mighty name of the living God. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, I thank you for the power of heaven right now, striking the souls of every person here in this place. In Jesus' name. In the Malastokota Pai, filled up in Jesus' name. Filled up in Nasta filled up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Filled up most awry. Filled up in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Filled to overflowing. Uh, if you're sick in your body or diseased or hurting or in pain, right, right now you're getting ready to get healed. <laughs> filled up right now. Bald head filled up in Jesus' name. Kila Karastataran. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of the living God. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I have a couple of friends of mine. They, uh, they pick out a couple of people, lay hands on them, and uh, move on in the, in the anointing. I just lay hands on everybody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God right now in Jesus' name. Right now in the name of the living God. Hallelujah. So I said, I, I like to go to church where I can come in and go out without anybody laying hands on me. Well, you just, you're in the wrong place. You're trapped now. I'm going to lock the doors. Mox <laughs> Territai. We'll chase you down, lay hands on you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Be filled up. Be filled up. Hallelujah. If you don't want the power of God to come on you, you better make a shot for the door quick. I'm telling you right now. Make a run. Make a run. But while there's still a moment. <laughs> in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, best of Koratai, blessed in Jesus' name, blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Kodamang leste perati, malanande este kerasutala. Hallelujah. Bo siperatela. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Changed by the power of God. Changed. Bailey Kulsta. Filled up. Filled up. Filled up in Jesus' name. Blatada parasita. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every yoke broken in Jesus' name. Every yoke broken right now. Now, Alan, let the love of God overwhelm you. Let the goodness of God overwhelm you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Suddenly they saw company of angels singing, Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. <laughs> Hallelujah. Right now in Jesus' name, be blessed. Right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Be blessed right now in Jesus' name. Touched by the power of God. Touched. Touched. Let Kodas die. Touched. Thank you, Father God, for change. Thank you, Lord God, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Kodasamblekana. Totorotisili. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name. I'm going to raise the dead here tonight. I figure I got a job. I got to raise the dead. We're at Kudos. Praise the scripture says the dead cannot praise him. So praise the name of the Lord. When I don't hear much praise, I recognize that. You know, we got. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I said, so I said, why are you laying hands on us? Because I want you to feel exactly what I'm feeling. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you look different. So, huh? Okay, fever gone. Let's do it go. Huh? Done. I saw Geneva praying for her. You didn't think Geneva's prayer was good enough? 
Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now, just get filled up. Get filled up with the good things of heaven. Now, you understand me. Understand this. Understand this. The manifestation of the Spirit or the fruit or the evidence of the Spirit is love, joy, and peace. Now, you're not going to have much of that if you don't participate with love. You're not going to, if you don't participate with love, you think the Holy Ghost is going to gra grab a lariat, come running at you? Huh? Lariat. How many know what a lariat is? Huh? Grab a lariat, rope you, honk tie you, and say, be happy. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. You have to, you have to participate with him. He said, well, I'm just not happy. Well, you can be happy in a moment, instant, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Huh? You have full control over that. You, did, did you know that? Full control over being happy. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. Somebody did this and somebody did that in this situation, that circumstance. Oh, so somebody has control over you. And the circumstance has control over you. You don't want to do that. Let the Holy Spirit have control over you. Let him rule your life. And then all you have to do is just participate with him. And one of the ways you begin, begin to participate with him, it, just participate with love, you start hugging people. Tell them that you love them. Participating with love. Huh? Being kind to people. Huh? Isn't that amazing? Wouldn't it be great if all God's people would just start being kind to everybody around them? Wouldn't that be amazing? Huh? Wouldn't that be amazing? I think that'd be amazing. I'm interested in that. If you want, look, if you want to see, if you want to see the gifts of the Spirit, listen to me. You want to see the gifts of the Spirit operate in your life? Then you have to participate with the gifts of the Spirit. You want to see healing operate in your life? You know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to participate with healing. Jesus said, Jesus gave us the command, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they'll cast out devils. Okay, let's just start with casting out devils. That's what Jesus said. That's the commission. Gave us authority over unclean spirits to cast them out. Are you with me? Then what you have to do is you have to participate with the casting out of devils. We say, well, I don't know that I can do that. What do you mean you don't know that you can do that? Jesus told you, he commanded you to do it. He didn't give you an option. He said, well, you know, if you'd like to, if you can think you can do it. If you think you can do it, then I would like for you to go do it. He didn't say that. He said, in these signs shall follow them that believe. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, anyone who believes on me, these works shall he do, and greater works than these, because I go to my Father. Anyone. Didn't say 12 disciples. Didn't say 70 others also. Didn't say 120. Didn't say first century church. Said anyone. Hallelujah. And I'm glad he said anyone. <laughs> I am so blessed he didn't say, if you believe on me. Because you know what people would do? They'd come along in a modern setting, modern context, and say, see, see, he was only talking to the 12 there that night. Well, then if he was only talking to the 12 there that night about doing greater works and all these other things, then he was only talking to the 12 about salvation too. So you can't have one part and reject the other. Huh? You can't reject one part and have the other. You can't, you can't mix and divide as you want. Well, why would you want to do that anyways? Well, some people are afraid when we start talking along these lines. Because now you're going to step out, a realm, out of a realm of human limitation and you're going to begin to participate with the realm of the heavenly. And that's a little scary for everybody. Just a little scary. It's a little bit beyond your control. Somebody says, what, what if you pray for people and nothing happens? Well, you know what? It's not, my, it's not even my responsibility. My responsibility is pray for them. It's God's responsibility for the happening. You know, and he's, all of his promises are true. Why do some people get healed and others don't? Some people believe and others don't. That's one answer right there. Why do some people get healed and others don't? Because some people believe and other people don't. Oh, you can't say that. Well, Jesus said that. Huh? He, if, uh, he said that. In fact, I can even show you places where he said it in context of where some people get healed and some people don't. It's because the minister, him, the minister themselves had problems. Yeah. So here's the disciples. They go. They, Jesus has commissioned them to go cast out devils. And they're just all excited because, wow, the devils are subject to us through your name. He, he gave them power and authority to raise the dead even. And now they find they come to this little guy who the devil would off come upon him, throw him into the fire, throw him into the water, and they couldn't cast out that devil. And, and they said to Jesus, why couldn't we cast out the devil? Because he came out and said, you know, devil, get out, go. And the uh, devil listened. He said, well, why, why couldn't we cast him out? He said, because of your unbelief. That's the way he put it. Because you, did, because you stepped over into a realm where the faith of, of the presence 
of the living God, the faith of Jesus Christ, the faith of his person, and that relationship they had with him wasn't able to work. Look, if you're going to participate with casting out, with, with this work of, of God's grace where you cast out devils, you're going to have to start casting out devils. If you're going to see the gift of healing arise in your life, then you're going to have to start laying hands on the sick instead of running to the medicine cabinet, instead of running to the doctor. Somebody said, oh, we said we couldn't go to the doctor. Go to the doctor all you want. Spend your money. Fine. Go get another remedy. Huh? Let them poke you with needles all you want. I'm not, I'm not saying anything. I'm just telling you, there's two different realms. I'm telling you, I don't have to go to the doctor. And God's no respect to a person, so you don't have to go to the doctor either. You don't have to go to the doctor. Huh? You just begin to participate with healing. He, he's going he's to make good on what he promised you. He's promised you resurrection life. You can live right now in resurrection life. When Jesus rose up from the dead, he rose up with proof that he had all power and authority over everything that Satan has ever done and ever possibly could do. And he says, you are raised up together with me in that same place, in that posi same position, par far above all principalities and power and might and dominion. Well, this is what Father has given to us in Christ Jesus. He's given us this amazing inheritance. And we choose to be sad. We choose to be unhappy. We choose to be, un we choose to be unbelieving. We choose to be unthankful. We choose to murmur. We choose to be relegated to a realm of human ability when all the time we could have stepped over into heaven and started moving in faith and calling things which are not as though they were and watching mountains be moved out of the way. I hope you're going to start participating with joy tonight. And then when you get around all your relatives that don't like you tomorrow, you can be so happy. And you can bless them and you can genuinely hug them. And there won't be all this problem going on inside. I can remember 20 years ago when they said that thing about me. You won't have any of that. It's gone. It's removed from off of you. That sin, that iniquity, that prism, that bondage, that thing that holds you within the claw and realm of hate and strife and unforgiveness. You know, just think about this with me for just a minute. I'm still praying for people. I'm coming to you. <laughs> Just want to take a break. <laughs> Jesus said, Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24. He's, he's telling them, if you've got faith, just any little teeny, 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 tiny little bit of faith, like, a, like the grain, like the size of a mustard seed, it's very, very small. Mustard seeds are very small. I mean, if you know what a mustard seed looks like, people are doing cooking right now, right? So you use mustard seed for different things. That's small. One of the smallest seeds. And he said, if you get just a little teeny bit of faith, you'll say to this mountain, be removed, cast in the seed, obey you. And nothing will be impossible for you. Wow. You, if, if when you stand praying, he says, if you believe those things that you have, re if you re believe that you have received those things which you've asked the Father, then whatsoever you say will be yours. That's pretty radical, right? But then he says, but while you're standing there praying, if you recognize that you have unforgiveness in your heart, you better get rid of that because God's not here. Nothing. Somebody said, I prayed one time. I've been trying to move mountains. I don't know. Nothing happened. Proof that God's a liar. Well, you know what? That's not proof that God's a liar. It's proof you a liar. My, my vantage point, my perception says it proves you a liar. Proves that you're saying that you're right with God and you're not. Because God's going to come through. He's, Father, is, Father cannot lie. He's either real and he is who he said he is and he'll do what he said he'll do or he's a liar and a myth and away with it. But he is no myth. He's no liar. It's you and I that's got to change. He doesn't need to change. He doesn't need to, he says he doesn't need to do one thing different. He's perfect in every way. We don't want him to change. Praise God. He's immutable. That means he's unchanging. Hallelujah. All you and I have to do is recognize we're the ones that need to change. We're the ones that need to participate. You want to, see, you want to step into that love, that glorious love? I mean, I, there are times where we get to experience it on a level. I mean, I've experienced this love on a level where anybody who's sick or anybody who's diseased is in a place they're going to get healed. It's a tangible love. If you're in your worst enemy, the person who did you the worst in your entire life, the, wor the worst person you could possibly think of, walked in, you'd want to hug him and kiss him. That kind of love. 
It totally translates you out of the realm of all your stuff over into the realm of everything that God has for us. A, a love that would, would cause Father to commend His love to us when we were yet enemies, His enemies by wicked works. His enemies, everything opposite, everything He despises, everything that His wrath and indignation is poured out against, that's who we were. And He commended, He, he knows how to co just give love. God so loved the world. He gave His only begotten Son. But I'm going to tell you something right now. That's not a relationship love. That's just God's loving the world. You want to step into a relationship love? Jesus said, if you obey me, my Father will love you. And we will come make our dwelling with you. You've got to participate with that love. You're going to have to quit having a bad attitude. You're going to have to quit finding fault, finding problem. There are too many people who were genuinely born again. They were born of the Spirit. Genuinely born of the Spirit. And they've never matured past a week old spiritually. They, and, and what's happened is they begin to be, instead of being trained in the mind of Christ, they begin to be trained in the mind of imaginations. And so they've always got crazy imaginations going on. And then what's worse is they begin to say that those imaginations are, are the spirit of the Lord talking to them. And it's imaginations. It's imaginations that create strife. It's imaginations that create sorrow. It's imaginations that ultimately leave them vulnerable to being pulled into a realm of sin and iniquity. Where men, uh, here's what Isaiah said. He said concerning God's people, he said, their eyes are full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin. Do you think that there's people that are in churches today that actually preach that kind of a message? They say, oh, we're sinners and we cannot help it. We're professional sinners. We're just going to always be sinning. Well, God has a wrath and an indignation against that. And, and, and I want to minister to you a little bit on that tonight. I want to help you understand how to participate with the Holy Ghost. If you will participate with them, you know what will happen? You will begin to step into a deeper realm of the manifestation and the expression of the Holy Spirit. Let, let me say this to you, dear people, listen to me. You know, and I could say this from the point of business and people would understand what I'm saying. You can have growth without profitability. It all depends on how you manage your resources. Huh? You can, you can, you can go from a $10 company to a $10 million company and not be profitable. Because what you could do is just keep spending it on things. Maybe even things that create great growth. There are churches that have great growth, but it's not profitable. Nobody's really lives are really changed. The scripture says that the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every one of us so that we can profit. Everyone. The Lord didn't just say, well, I just gave the manifestations of my Holy Spirit to just a few select people, just a couple of people. They're really very special people. They, they were born a little different, you know. I, and there's a couple of people I've shaped and formed them in the, room, in the womb of their mother. The rest of you just happened by accident. <laughs> The Lord doesn't say anything like that. It's not God's message. It's not what had it. Huh? You, anybody believe that? He says a manifestation of the Holy Ghost is given to everybody. Huh? It is. Huh? It is. Say it is. Because I know that some of you are thinking that. And if you're not thinking that, you should be thinking it because you act like it. Are you listening to me? Somebody says, I don't even believe that's in the Bible. Well, it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. Huh? The manifestation of the Holy Ghost is given to every person so that they can make this, so that they can profit. And you can check up on me. Check up on me. Check up on me. And then, and then the Lord doesn't just leave it there because we don't know well, what, what does that mean? Manifestation of the Spirit is given to every person. He says to one's given a word of knowledge. Huh? Well, what's the word of knowledge? That's when Jesus, that's when Jesus saw Nathaniel come to him. Right now in the name of Jesus. That's when Jesus saw Nathaniel come to him. And said, oh, behold, Israelite in whom there is no guile. He said, and Nathaniel said, how is it that you know me? He said, well, well, you were sitting underneath the fig tree. I saw you there. And what is the next thing he says? Oh, my Lord, my God. Huh? She said, that ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. You're going to see angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing right now. Father, I thank you for change in this life and in this family. Divine order in the name of Jesus Christ. Sukkot masatala dangalisti parasitala. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Blessed. No sickness, no disease. Hey, wouldn't it? How many of you think it would be great 
to live a life with no sickness nor disease. You never got sick. Never, not even any cavities. Anybody good with that? Good with that? Well, then why wouldn't he be good with having a life with no sin? What's up? What's up with that? Huh? Oh, I don't want sickness and disease. That, 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 that hurts. That's terrible. That's death and corruption. Well, so is sin. Wages of sin is death. Huh? That's why Peter says, Peter said, listen, listen to what Peter says. He said, we have received, be blessed right now in the name of Jesus. Be blessed right now in the name of Jesus. The Lord loves you. The Lord Jesus loves you. Here's what Peter says. He said, we received the divine nature. Wow. <laughs> I put that up one time on Facebook. We have received the divine nature and we have escaped the corruption that is in the world that is caused and comes into our life by sin. Somebody Facebook's face messages me back and says, oh, there's something wrong with your spirit. <laughs> I mean, I didn't add anything to the scripture. I just put it up to the scripture. Oh, there's something wrong with your spirit. What I didn't do is I didn't put the reference. There's something wrong with your spirit. So they blamed it on me. So I just, I just Facebook back. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. <laughs> That's what God said. I didn't say it. I'm just going with him. He's got the goods. He knows the way. He knows the path of life. He knows the way thereof. No man knows. No man knows. Huh? Look, there are a few bright people on the face of the earth, a few, who understand things like physical chemistry. A few bright people. Huh? Who really understand, really truly understand multivariable equations. The rest of us, we're not that bright. Huh? And now we're going to understand the ageless realm of the eternal God and the ways of life and how to participate with this realm, how to say no to the powers of darkness that are bent on destroying us. Come on, man. We don't know God. But here's what the Lord has done. He and his love has come and taught us in his word exactly what we need to do. And then he went beyond that. He sent the Holy Ghost to grab a hold of us, lead us and guide us to gently draw us. Say, come, let me show you how it works. Here, this is what you do. Smile. <laughs> smile. I'm going to teach you fundamentally uh, how to smile. We're going to work with smiling first. <laughs> then we're going to go to happy. Then we're going to go to joy, unspeakable, and full of glory. And then we're going to start, when we're all along that way, all parallel to that, we're going to be nice to people. And we're going to be happy. We're going to be happy with our families. We're just going to be happy when we see them. We're not going to go, we're going to smile when they walk in the door. We're not going to have a bad attitude. Oh, I've got something against you. I remember what you said 10 years ago. Or whatever it is that we're holding on to. Huh? Believe me. I am certain that every one of you understand exactly what I am saying. What happens? What happens to you when you first see that person who did you wrong or you're disgruntled with your spouse or your loved one? And, and what happens to you at that moment of decision that you decide to be upset? Instead of being happy. That you decide to punish them. Huh? That you decide to chastise them. That you decide not to have a communion and fellowship. You decide, I'm not blessing them. I'm going to curse them. I'm not going to bless them with a smile. I'm going to curse them with a frown. I'm not going to bless them with a happy to see you and a kiss. I'm going to curse them with a rejection. Stay away from me until you get this right. Where's my flowers and chocolates or whatever. <laughs> what happens in that moment that you and I decide... To go with something that belongs opposite to the kingdom of God that we were taught in the realms of men that were literally orchestrated by the powers of darkness instead of being willing to simply obey what the Bible says. Real simple stuff. Real simple stuff. And now the Holy Spirit's standing there to help us and lead us here, to take us there. What happens? Well, let me tell you the first thing that goes on. First thing that goes on is you just simply weren't prepared Something is going on in your life. Something in your relationship with the Lord is wrong. Because first and foremost, you should have been so full of the Holy Ghost already. You should have been so full of His love. You should have been so full of His joy. Having, having the privilege of not, only, of not only being born of the Spirit, having a new heart and a new spirit, with His Spirit on the inside of you, you've got the Spirit of God on the inside of you, then you're baptized in the Holy Ghost and filled with the Holy Ghost. You, some place in our lives, things need to be adjusted. There's some basic fundamental decisions about relationship with God that needs to change. Real simple. 
There are things that you're allowing in your life have nothing to do with heaven, have nothing to do with God, have nothing to do with reality. You are being played like a puppet on a string. You're being messed with and lied to, and you're going with it. God's light of truth is shining brightly in your face. Jesus modeled this for us. The Word of God is there very plainly speaking to us, and the Holy Ghost is here drawing us and saying, Come, go with me. Let me lead you. I want to show you how to live in me, how to walk in me, how to be like me, how to feel what I feel. I want to show it to you on a level to where it's like rivers gushing out of you. I mean, what if, it'd be, what if the Lord just said, it's like, a, it's like an artesian gallon per minute, one gallon per minute artesian spring. That'd be pretty cool. One gallon a minute. Huh? Are you with me? Huh? Even one-tenth of a gallon a minute. It's seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think you could do a lot with that kind of Holy Ghost power. Are you with me? That's a trickle. It's a trickle. But it's fun. You know what I'm saying? You know what? It, come on. Or a gallon a minute. Or I, I got a spring. I got a spring that produces 42 gallons a minute. 56 degrees. It's unchanging. It doesn't change. It doesn't matter. You can go out there in the middle of the winter time, 56 degrees. Go out there in the middle of the heat of the summer, 56 degrees. It pours out 42 gallons per minute, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And it waters a huge land and pasture. Huge, making it green and and, and beautiful that can produce life and sustain life. It's beautiful. And the Lord looks at you and me and says, I'm going to, I give, I give to you rivers. Not a river, not a creek. A creek, a good creek. Just a good creek. Let's talk with a good creek for a minute. That's a spring, okay? A good creek is about two to 300 gallons of water per minute flow. Okay? A river. A, a river? A river? Do you know that that's like a basic, one of your basic standard rivers? Is it about a million gallons per minute? A million. That's a basic little standard river. million gallons per minute. God, the Holy Ghost, wants to speak in your, speak in your spirit. He wants to write in your spirit. Breathe, right? In, breathe. In the Greek language, we say spirit. We say tanuma. Tanuma. He wants to. He wants to. He wants to, he wants to breathe. He wants, he wants to fill you up with every good thing your soul is longing for. And when you're so full of him. There's room for nothing else. I mean, anybody want that? Yes. Yeah. You already have that. <laughs> and it's evident that you have that. I live with her. <laughs> I, I said one night, I said, I made a terrible mistake. I'm, I was in a strange church and strange. And I said, yeah, at home, I find the most beautiful woman in the church and I go home with her. Okay, and every time it's the same person. My wife is the most beautiful woman in the church, and I mean, just you could feel the wind suck completely out of the building. Obviously, it was a very terrible thing to say with all of the misconduct goes on in the ministry. But I mean, I, I do. I find the most beautiful woman every night. And you know what? I'm certain it will never change. When we 95 years old, she used to be the most beautiful woman. Because love defines something that is superior. She is physically in every way. Come on. But love defines things that go way beyond all the measures and the changing attitudes and opinions of men. Huh? We've been married 28 years. 28 and a half years. And I'm just now starting to understand a little bit about what love is. And it's a beautiful and wonderful thing. And the Holy Spirit wants to fill us I mean, I'm talking about love that exists between husband and wife. And 
And I could say in some respects that I'm just discovering those same things about the Holy Spirit. Are you? Are you experiencing those? Are you participating with it? You know, if you, if you want to participate with love, you know what you got to do? Forgive people. You know where forgiveness comes from? Mercy. You know where mercy comes from? Love. Mercy has an expression, and that expression, or forgive me, love has an expression, it's called compassion. And compassion, and especially you can see this in the Hebrew language, compassion can be translated mercy. And out of that mercy, you forgive people. What a wonderful thing to do. How many people here tonight? You know, reality of it is, there's people you've got to forgive because they've, done, they've, and they've done, done you wrong. You know, the greater, the greater part of valor in the kingdom of God is to declare his word even when circumstances and situations says it's not true. A valiant man will stand and say, God is true, he's not a liar. I'm going to declare it once again. It'll stand there and continue to say, man, I said, get out of the way. Mountain, move, go, now, get. It won't stop. It's a greater part of valor to declare the word of God to be true no matter what. The greater part of valor in the kingdom of God is to forgive everyone, especially those who have done you wrong the worst, the most. That's the greater part of valor. Where are the valiant? Where are the valiant? Where are those that are going to say, I'm not going with my own way. I'm not going with the way of men. I'm going to seek the Lord while he may be found. Isaiah 55, 6 says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. But there's something you've got to do. There's a condition. Verse 7, let the wicked man forsake his thoughts. You want to seek the Lord and hang on to wicked thoughts? You ain't seeking God, baby. I'm telling you, it ain't going to work. You're going, to have to, you're going to have to push that stuff out because it, it's absolutely going to be to you death and destruction in a prison, a chain, a hindrance. Satan is not going to allow you. He's going to be able to have influence over you and stop you. Christ Jesus is the Savior and he's calling, wants to come and rescue you. And there's no power, there's no greater power than the power which he has. His name is above every name. But the bottom line of it is you and I have to choose whether or not we're going to come under his divine reign. And if we come under his divine reign, I'm telling you, Satan is cast out. Listen, if you would simply grab a hold of this and understand all you need to do is acknowledge and recognize what the Holy Ghost is doing and do it with them. And as soon as you're willing to do that, you enter to the school of the spirit and the holy ghost has come to teach us everything john chapter 14 verse 26 and until you do that you don't belong to god you belong to another realm now i want to i want to go i want to i want to spend some time with you on this okay john chapter 16 and jesus says in verse 7 it's expedient for you nevertheless it's expedient for you that i go away it's expedient for you that I go away, that I leave. Because unless I go, the Holy Ghost can, can, cannot come. Now, I want to say this. The most expeditious thing for the disciples at that moment, and for you and me, was that Jesus went to the cross. He was standing there talking about going to the cross. Hallelujah. He, when he said, it's expedient for you that I go, he had to go redeem us. He had to go and take our place. He had to go and lay down his life for us. He went there, and when he went there, he, he I'm telling you right, you know, what, you know what happened at the cross? Jesus showed the world how Father feels about sin. Father destroyed his own bego only begotten son on the cross. Why? That's what the Bible says. Isaiah the prophet said, it pleased him, pleased the Father to bruise his son, to offer him up as a ransom and sacrifice. Why? Because Jesus took in his own body on the cross every sin, all the sins of the world. He bore in his own body on the tree every one of our sins. Right? Tell me where the scripture is. Tell me where the scripture is. Because then I know you're in the school of spirit. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. He in himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree so that now we can be cut off dead to sin. Huh? and now live unto righteousness. Are you with me? You tracking with me? Because I'm getting ready to give you what the Holy Ghost is doing, this outline right there in John chapter 16, verses 8, 9, and 10. I'm prepping you, okay? I'm prepping you. Are you listening to me? I'm li listen to me. 
people think that somehow God's going to weak at sin. He's not weakening at sin. He commands everybody everywhere to repent. Understand, that's what Jesus did. He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom saying, repent. He came preaching the gospel of the kingdom saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand in hand. Now, I want you to understand this. Here man is going according to the course of this world, okay? He's going, man is moving and being led by, well, worse than being led by, being controlled by the God of this world, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Did you know that there's children of disobedience? Anybody knows that? You know what, how many of you know what verse of scripture I'm quoting? For everybody's sake, I'm quoting Ephesians 2.2. 2. Okay? Huh? For, everybody, for everybody's understanding, I'm quoting Ephesians 2.2 2 and 3, but just, I'm, just start at 2. Okay? Are you with me? Hey, listen, in the, listen can, I, can I say this? It is accepted within the community of scholars that if you can assume that everybody knows what you're talking about, you do not have to cite the reference. If everybody can agree, if everybody's educated enough that they know that this is familiar enough to all of us, are you with me? This is accepted in academia. But I discovered that there is a real lack of knowledge of the word among God's people who supposedly know lots of stuff. What is it, this stuff that you know? What is it? Because the stuff that you know, it better be the Word of God. If it's not the Word of God, it is changing. It, what you think you believe may not be true, and it's certainly, by the value and standards of men, going to be different tomorrow. Now, God's Word is unchanging. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not, it's easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one jot or tittle of anything that He said to pass away. All right, listen to me. All flesh is grass, all the glory of men is the flower of the field, the grass withers, the flower thereof fades away. That's what men is. But the word of God endures forever. This is the word which we preach to you by the Holy Ghost, which came down from heaven and is written in the pages of your Bible. What is it that you believe? Listen to me. It isn't stories that are subjective, that are open for review. Some of it belongs and some of it doesn't belong. It's the word of God. He's watched over his word to perform his word. Now, what you want to do is you want to grab all the word and you want to get it in you. Because that word of God is going to, that word of God, Jesus said, is spirit and life. John 6, 63, spirit and life. Are you listening to me? His word is living and it's powerful. His word is the means by which you and I were born again. It's an, uh, Peter called it incorruptible seed. Here we are. We were moving with the course of this world. Children of disobedience. We were born of disobedience. Now the Lord granted to us the gift of repentance unto life, which is now the privilege and opportunity to be born again, to be born of the Spirit, to have a new heart and a new spirit, a different heart, a different spirit than what you were born with, to be filled with the Spirit, now to come under the leadership of the Holy Ghost, to completely walk in an opposite direction now. I'm no longer under the influence of the demon spirits. I'm no longer under the influence of the spirit of disobedience, the God of this world. I'm no longer under His influence. Whose influence am I under? Holy Ghost. Well, why would I be acting like I'm under the influence of a demon spirit then? Being frownful and sadful and meanful and uh, unkindful and all the other fools that are wrong. Why would, I, why, why would I live in lust and corruption? And why would I live in the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life when all that, is the, that belongs to that is not of the Father? And I'm of the Father. Are you of the Father? As many as have been born, as many as believed Him, as many as received him, he gave them the power of the authority to be sons of God. Huh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. What a blessed gift. And now here as newborn babes, we desire the sincere milk of the word. As newborn babes here, now we're supposed to be walking in the spirit. As many as are led by the spirit, these are the sons of God. Is that true or false? That's, that's true. If you're not led by, listen, if you're not led by the Holy Ghost, if you're not under his guidance, if you're not under his leadership, if you're not under his reign, if you're not under his influence, if you're not under his authority, then there's no proof that you've been born of God. When you're born of God, that's what happens to you. Now, he's here teaching us and he's leading us and he's guiding us and he's showing us some fundamental things that we want to participate with. And when you look at John chapter 16 and verse 8, you'll see that the Holy Ghost has come to do some few things. He's come... <laughs> To convince the world of sin. To convince or to reprove. This particular Greek language, Greek word in the Greek language, primarily means to, re, to reprove. To convince someone of something. 
Now understand, the Holy Ghost, the world cannot receive the Holy Ghost. Okay? We've received him. He's come to us. He's come to, to us, those of us who have been born of the Spirit, those of us who've responded to this wonderful message and call for salvation. He's come to convince the world, it says. Do you see that? They say, he's kind of convinced the believer. Did it say that? Anybody see that? Could you see that? So very, those words are really important, aren't they? Huh? You don't want to miss that on the test. It's just going to be simply marked wrong. I just mark it completely wrong. I mean, if you miss that one word, and one very important noun is... Are you with me? He's kind of convinced the world of sin. He's kind of convinced the world that the wrath of God is about to rain down. And this earth, this whole world will be consumed with fire. That everyone who has been unwilling to receive salvation, everyone, in other words, who's been unwilling to say no to the devil, unwilling to come under the reign and rule of Christ Jesus, everyone who's been unwilling to break ties with the power of darkness, with everything that is contrary to God, every, everything that belongs to immorality, every person who's been unwilling, the wrath of God will come upon all the children of disobedience. Peter said that this world, that the elements of this world, this whole earth, will burn up with a fervent heat in the midst of God pouring out His wrath and indignation upon all sin and upon all ungodliness. And says in that context, of course, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, right? How we, at verse 18, how we, we should therefore live our lives in all holiness and godliness. We should walk in this wonderful, awesome awareness of God's condemnation against sin. God didn't come into the world. Christ Jesus didn't come into the world to condemn the world. The world was already condemned. Or do you understand that? He's come, the Holy Ghost has come to convince the world of sin. So what happens when the preacher says, look, you can't have sin in your life. If you have these things going on in your life, and I'm going to name them Galatians chapter 5, verse 19, 20, right? We go and we start naming them. Adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, uncleanness, hatred, variance, drive. Witchcraft, idolatry, all of these very things, 19 things that are named there. He said, anyone who participates with these things have no inheritance in the kingdom of God. He said, on the other hand, those who are having inheritance in the kingdom of God, those who are born of the Spirit, what they walk in love and joy and peace. They're walking in long suffering and gentleness and goodness. I mean, how about how about tonight? What if tonight you were willing to hook up with goodness and live the rest of your life in goodness? What if tonight you were willing to hook up with joy unspeakable and full of glory and, and, and willing to live your life in joy unspeakable and full of glory? Peter said, we've received the end of our salvation wherein we greatly rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. I received it. Have you received this wonderful salvation? And now, and now the Holy Spirit says, okay, now I'm going to perfect these things in you. I'm going to mature these things in your life. But you've got to be willing to participate with me. Now, if you're doing that, if you're participating with God in these wonderful things that pertain to life and godliness, and you're, you're being filled up with Him, you're not going to be over here searching. For the, you're not going to have some loneliness in your heart, some emptiness on the inside of you, looking for something to stuff in here, looking for something to fill your emptiness and your loneliness and your and discontentment. Jesus says to the woman at the well who'd been married five times, and was living with a man who wasn't her husband, he says to her, he says, I'll give you to drink, and what will happen is a wellspring will spring up on the inside of you. John 14, 16, he introduces this to this woman at the well. A wellspring will spring up on the inside of you, and you'll never thirst again. Wow, what a salvation. Anybody want that salvation? Anybody like that salvation? There's a lot of people saying that they're saved, that they know Jesus Christ. But do you have the fruits of the Spirit? Have you born, been born, do you have the proof that you've been born of God? Is, the, is, is there a living reality of relationship? Do you have power to overcome sin? It is fundamentally the proof that you've been born again. You have authority and power to overcome sin. In fact, 
<laughs> when you're so filled up with God, so filled up with all of these things that pertain to life and godliness, when you live in that realm, sin doesn't really have much appeal to you. And, and whatever appeal it has, ultimately you're going to be taught of the Holy Ghost the defiance it is against the kingdom of God, the destruction it is against your life, and you're going to come to a place where you hate it. Jesus loved righteousness, hated iniquity, therefore God anointed him with the oil of joy above all his companions. Pretty nice. And you and I have been made to follow him. We're supposed to follow him. He lives in us. We live in him. Even as he is, so we now in this world, right? Is this true? This is the faith that overcomes the world. This is the faith that has, this is the faith, this is the faith that conquers, is conquering power that overcomes or conquers the world. Mm. So, so, right now you're sitting in a situation where based upon your walk with God, you have various different capacities to receive. If you've been spending time with the Lord today and you've lived for Him, your heart's wide open for the things of God. It's very easy for you to just to hook right up. If you've been living in the world and you've been living after the flesh and you've been living after the realm of your own interest and filled with earthly things, it's very difficult for you to make a transition and now change and come back over here and start connecting with the things of the Holy Ghost. It's just true. It's just true. So... When you get off that merry-go-round. You know, when you think about the Holy Ghost, let's think about him in the Old Testament for just a minute. Let's just think about him for just a minute in the book of Judges. The Spirit of the Lord, which is another way to say the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, would come upon different men and they would destroy the enemies of God's people. One of the, one of the interesting things things about the Holy Ghost is the ability that has been given to destroy every power that is unlike God and that is set against the interest of God's people. Now, we look at that in the context of 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 through 8. We know that everyone who does righteous, righteousness is born of him. Everyone who sins is of the devil. And for this cause, he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Wow. Is that drawing a line in the sand? Does somebody all of a sudden know where the battlefield line is drawn? What you're supposed to be doing, what you're not supposed to be doing? Isn't it wonderful that the Lord's willing to train us? That he's got all this compassion, all this mercy? That he's provided unlimited means of forgiveness for the people who really want it? I mean, you know, you say, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But at some point he's going to say, well, well, okay, fine. But when are you going to repent? When are you going to come under the leadership of the Holy Ghost? And when are you going to, when are you going to come and walk with me? God wants to meet you tonight. He wants to take those things that have been your weaknesses. He wants to take those things that have been your problems. He wants to take those things that have captivated you with an interest for earthly things. And he wants to break the yoke. He wants to break off every fetter. He wants to, he wants to open up your, uh, the, your eyes so that you can clearly see what's going on around you. So that mind-blinding spirits will not be able to overwhelm you, control you, influence you, deceive you. He wants to open your eyes. He wants to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation tonight so that you can see. <laughs> Hallelujah. How good it is to live in this wonderful realm called the divine nature. How, how to live in this wonderful place called the Holy Ghost. The spirit of holiness. These are all synonyms. How to live in this wonderful realm called heaven. Because we've been translated from the kingdoms of this world, from the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of the dear son. That's something that's already happened according to what Paul said in Colossians 1.13. I believe that all God's people need to memorize that verse of scripture. Because that it's going to change the way you perceive things. Huh? Too many people want to be earthly. Paul said, set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth. If you're risen with Christ, there, has to be, there needs to be resurrection life. When Jesus rose up from the dead, he rose up with power and authority saying Satan has no rights over him. 
That's what he rose up saying. Satan has no rights over him. He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And you and I are raised up together with him in resurrection power and resurrection life says, Satan has no power over me. Then furthermore, the Lord has given us authority to go cast out devils to cure sickness and diseases. Everywhere we, uh, everywhere we encounter the powers of darkness to overthrow them. But what happens is Satan is doing this. He's doing everything he possibly can to invalidate that. First of all, he's rebellious, he's a liar, he doesn't want you to be able to, for one moment, have a relationship with the Lord. If he can convince you that you can't have one, he will. He's going to do everything to defy the Word of God and the life of Christ Jesus and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. He's going to do everything he possibly can to hinder you and imprison you. He's going to do every possible thing within the framework of the rights that he has, the latitude that he has. And, of course, Paul said, No temptation has come against you except for that which is common to men, and the Lord has made a way for you to escape it, <laughs> not do it. Did it say do it? No temptation has come to you except for that which is common to man. It's okay. God understands when you do it. It doesn't say that. Huh? It said, blessed is the man who endures temptation. Huh, right? Uh, for if you endure it, what's going to happen at the end? You're going to receive a crown of righteousness. righteousness. <laughs> and you're not getting away getting crowned with unrighteousness. Praise God. You get crowned with whatever you are. We dead unto sin that we might live unto righteousness. By whose stripes we were healed. By whose wound we were healed. Were you healed? Yes. I, I was cured. <laughs> what was I cured of? I was cured of a sin problem. I was cured of a demon problem. Huh? Mm -hmm. I was cured of a spiritual problem. I was cured of spiritual death. Yeah. Yeah. People, we want, God wants to make you strong. God wants to make you strong. The Holy Spirit's come to convince the world of sin. If you're going to go preach the gospel and you're going to see people's lives transformed, what you're going to do, is you're going to participate with the Holy Ghost and say, just like Jesus said it. You're going to say it like Peter said it. Let's look how Peter said it real quick. Everybody's on vacation, right? Everybody's on vacation, right? You don't have to work tomorrow, right? Right? It's vacation, right? No one's in a hurry. Is anyone in a hurry? You have time to be built up in the spirit. Trying to be built up in the word, right? You have time for me to run off every harassing demon spirit that you've not been able to deal with, don't you? Because I can do that tonight for you. All you have to do is agree. Just a little teeny bit. Why? Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, to bind up the broken in heart. This is what the Holy Ghost is doing. You want to move with the Holy Ghost? You want to be led by the Holy Ghost? You want to do what the Holy Ghost is doing? You want to participate with Him? This is what you do. To proclaim liberty to the captive, to open the prison doors to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, just like Paul has said. The preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've been given the authority to turn people from the power of Satan to the power of God. That's what I'm saying here tonight. I've been given authority to turn people from the power of Satan to the power of God, from darkness to light. So that you can no longer, so that you can be, so that you can have spiritual sight and no longer be spiritually blind. Are you interested? I have the authority to break off every addiction. I have the authority to break off every sickness. I have authority to break off every disease. I have the authority to right now, tonight, to cast out every unclean spirit, to help you to deal with every imagination that has constantly been allowed to take you at its whim and at its will and then hold you into a prison so that you can't produce anything called fruit or you can't produce those wonderful things that make you profitable because you're in a realm of imagination and therefore because you went around a prison of imagination you can't flow in the word of knowledge you can't flow in the word of wisdom you can't flow in the discerning of spirits you can't flow in the working of miracles and the gifts of healing and the gift of faith and prophecy and tongues interpretation because you in a prison of imagination you never learn how to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ Jesus I want to help you with these things tonight that's what, that's what this meeting is about this meeting is about confronting the things that are hindering you that's what Wednesday night's about. If you want a simple gospel message, come on Sunday morning. <laughs> if, you want to, if you want to just function, flow for, for miracles, signs, and wonders, come on Sunday night. If you want me to get in your space, come on Wednesday night. 
because we're going to talk to you about the things that are hindering you. Not for the sake of any, in any way discouraging you, but to build you up in the faith, to give you confidence, to help you to clearly see your enemy so you can effectively deal with that thing. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the living God. Did you know that receiving the things from the Holy Ghost can be so, as simple as just raising your hands towards heaven? Huh? And that if you, just raise your hands towards heaven right now. Watch this. Just, just simply raise your hands towards heaven. And as you do, the power of God comes upon you. And you're overwhelmed with the goodness and the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Joy fills your heart. Gladness fills your heart. Hallelujah. I mean, what we look here's listen, here the point of this. We 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 want we want to help you understand how to have a personal relationship with the Lord so that any time of the day or night. You can, you can find yourself overwhelmed with his glory, overwhelmed with his manifest presence. That any situation you find yourself in, you have the resources and the goods to meet whatever problem you're facing, whether it's sickness or disease or torment or oppression or financial problems or fear, whatever the thing may be. That you have been given divine power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy so that nothing can by any means hurt you. Nothing that Satan is doing can even touch you. What, how, what? What? You mean I can live in this realm? Yeah, you can live in this realm. Can you, do you want to live? The question is, do you want to live in that realm? No, <laughs> hallelujah. Huh? Ha, ha, ha. Huh? So I said, I really want to be happy. Pastor, I really want to be happy. I'm sad. My, my, my dad was sad. My grandfather was sad. My great-grandfather was sad. We have depression going all the way back to Adam in our family line. But well, Jesus came to break off all of that family line stuff. Okay? But, but the, what the fact of it is, is when the Lord comes to touch you, fills you with joy, you've got to start acting different. It's up to your will. God doesn't change you. God doesn't go and jerk your will out of you and stick his will in you. You still have to simply say, okay, I will to do what you want me to do, Lord. Okay, I'm going to be happy. You said to be happy, and I've got received the oil of joy, right? I received beauty for ashes. Say, I see beauty for ashes. I see that means you were ash ugly. That's what it means. I was ash ugly. Like ashes to ashes, dust to dust, right? I had death all over me. Huh? Now I'm beautiful. Are you beautiful? But it's beautiful in different ways. It's beautiful in different ways. Say, well, I don't want to be all bragging and everything. No, this is different. Because I don't want to be all conceited. This isn't conceited. This is, this is glory in what he's done for you. Are you beautiful? I'm beautiful. He gave me beauty. Where does that beauty come from? His glory. No glory of, his, of no glory of the. Where does glory come from? Holy Ghost. No presence of God. No presence of the Holy Ghost. No active feeling of His presence. You ugly. You can put all the makeup on you want. I tell you right now. You ugly. The only one. That, the only one that's going to make us beautiful. <laughs> Are you, the only one that's going to make us beautiful is the presence of the Lord. The only one who makes it, can we get this? People, there's a lot of folks spending a lot of time with makeup and stuff. Listen, that only goes so far. Listen, I'm telling you right now, carrot juice and vitamins will only do so much for you. God, the Holy Ghost, will give you divine health. You can live in this divine blessing, but it's His glory, it's His presence. It's His presence. It's not some name tag, it's His presence. It's not something on your license. Oh, I'm a Muslim. Oh, I'm Hindu. Oh, I'm Christian. No. That's what happens in your KL, a few other places. You have on your license what you are. What are you? What was it? You're Muslim. You're Hindu. Or you're a Christian. No, it's the glory of the Lord. It's His majesty. It's that, it's that, which, can, it's that, it's that which will make the difference. It's that, which, it's, that, it's that which is going to make the difference in your life. We're not going to get to the nations yet. 
I want the Holy Ghost to impact you. And then once the Holy Ghost has fully impacted you, then, then we can talk about the nations. But by way of getting to the nations, you're firstly going to be right there with your husband or your wife, your spouse, your children, your parents, your family. Huh? Your community, your neighborhood. Because community can be where you go to work, where you go to play, where you go to shop. Mm. What happens if you really begin to mind spiritual things and begin to participate with spiritual things? If you participate with spiritual things, you're going to reach spiritual things. If you sow to the Spirit, you're going to reap of the Spirit, an unlimited, unmeasurable realm of this life of God. Right? If you mind spiritual things, you're going to reach spiritual things. If you mind carnal things, you're going to reap carnal things. If you, if you, if scripture says, if you mind, you know, if you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. corruption. Who wants corruption? That smells. That looks terrible. Who wants corruption? I'm like, I like a clean place, man. I want to live in a clean, beautiful place. Huh? Are you listening to me? And I know you do too. So you're going to have to start categorizing things to what they really are. And, what, and then stop trying to bring that corruption into the realms of God's divine life. Hey, trying to bring hell into heaven. There needs to be a distinction in people's lives. A clear distinction between heaven and hell. And then Paul takes it to another level. He makes a distinction between heaven and hell. But he also makes a distinction between heaven and earth. Heaven, heavenly realm and earthly realm. And realm of hell. He makes a distinction between those things that belong to the kingdom of God and the influence of the Holy Ghost, the influence of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Prince of Peace. So I, so I say, was well, Jesus ruling none for your life? Oh yeah, Jesus ruling none mine? Oh yeah, I was born... When I was born, I was, I was born praying. Wow. You, you hear, I mean, all, it's almost that bad. Wow. Well, I've always, well, I've always been a Christian. You have. Amazing. You're the first. <laughs> You're the first. Second, rather, Jesus was. Uh, you second. No, you gotta, there's a moment in time when you're born of God and things change in your life. Change, change, change. When was the moment of change that came into your life? Where Christ Jesus came to fill you up with every good thing to where he came to rule over your life. He's the Prince of Peace, dear people. I mean, could, if I could get people to make that connection, all of a sudden there's going to be a change. There's going to be a distinction going on. Wait a minute. Am I an expression of peace? Am I an expression of compassion? Am I an expression of love? And then you don't have to condemn yourself and go, oh, I'm just a loser, I'm miserable or whatever. No, you can say, no, Lord, Holy Spirit, I'm not being the expression of love and peace that I want to be. I'm not living under the influence of peace. I'm over somewhere over here in all this war and discouragement and problem and anxiety and strife. And people, you can never allow strife. People are constantly living in argument. They, and they're calling, it, they're calling it conflict. And they're still making conflict good. Forget about it. It's an argument. It's strife. It belongs to another realm. You and I have to be willing to say, no, I'm not doing that. I live under the rulership of the Prince of Peace. I'm being led by and filled by the spirit of peace. The Holy Ghost is bringing peace. It's a decision that we make. It's a simple decision. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing strife. I'm not doing anger. I'm not doing sadness. I'm not doing sorrow. I received the oil of joy for mourning. I don't do mourning. But mourning's pulling on me big time. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Something bigger's pulling on me. The Holy Ghost is pulling on me. I tell you, I can help you to find false doctrine really easily. Anything that makes Satan bigger than God is false doctrine. Anything that makes the power of the devil greater than the power of the Lord Jesus Christ is false doctrine. Anything that makes sin greater, in other words, than righteousness is false doctrine. Are you listening to me? That's what the Bible says. It should, it's not hard for people to grasp that... God is bigger than Satan. And that anything that would make Satan greater than God would be false doctrine. That's easy to get, isn't it? It's easy, right? But then you go, anything that makes sin bigger than righteousness is false doctrine. Then everybody starts shutting down. And thinking, hmm, could that be a possibility? Absolutely. It's true. He died at Calvary so that we being dead to sin might live in the righteousness. His power 
power, the power of God. Holy Ghost has come teach us the ways of God. And when we, if we stumble, and we fail, and we get deceived, and we've got wrong models, and we've got wrong instructors, and we've got wrong teaching programs, and we've given place to the devil in our life, and we've given place to the lust of flesh, lust of eye, and pride of life, and we've given place to unholy influences, God the Holy Ghost is tugging on us to say, no, don't do that. Huh? If we stumble, stumble up and, and trip, there's the goodness of God that's constantly leading us to repentance to show us how to walk in the ways of life. The ways of life. The ways of life are good. Come on. The ways of life are good. Is there going to be a force of your will? Yeah. There's going to be a force of your will. Jesus sweat. Jesus was in such a a anguish that the scripture says his sweat became his great drops of blood. Dealing with with the powers of darkness that had come to destroy him in the garden. The scripture says, you and I, we've never resisted sin unto a place of that kind of blood. And we, 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 Satan isn't going to come and cut you, you know. He's not going to come and, and, and be able to go beyond certain realms of influence to entrap you into things that would destroy your soul and rip, off your inherit, rip you off of your inheritance. There's limitations set upon you. Tonight, my desire, God the Holy Ghost's desire, is to see you walk in a place of relationship with the Lord that you're more than a conqueror. That you're more than a conqueror. That you, that you an overcomer. That you overcome Satan and you overcome the world just like Jesus overcame the world. This is Jesus' message. Did you know that? He said, if you overcome even as I overcame, then you will sit down with me in my throne even as I sit down with my Father in his throne. That's Jesus' message. That's what Jesus said. People want to change that. I don't want to change that. I want to leave this realm, this earthly realm, and I want to step right over into that heavenly realm. I want to go to no waiting room. Nope. <laughs> Everybody ever heard said they saw a light going into a tunnel and there was a waiting room? That's the wrong way. <laughs> you, you, the next step is hell. And those are just the people that, you know, supposedly, well, I know one that I believe actually, that actually happened to a preacher. He died with unforgiveness in the spirit. And he was raised from the dead. His name was Daniel, raised from the dead in Reinhardt Bunke meeting. He described that. He said, I saw light into a tunnel, into a confined place. Then I went to an examination room. And he kept screaming, you know, you, no, you, you got the wrong file. That's not my file. And then he, and from right there, he began to fall down into the hill. And uh, he was raised from the dead. That's a pretty wild story, isn't it? I don't know that that's true because it's not in the Bible. I mean, this preacher. I mean, one thing to die with unforgiveness would be un another thing to write a book and be a verifiable liar and die and go to hell. It was, you know what I'm saying? It's this between him and God. I, you know, I, I wouldn't do that for nothing. I don't believe he would either. I'm telling you, dear people, Father has so much for us right now. Heavens, we can have heaven right now. We can live in heaven right now. Do you want heaven right now? The Holy Spirit has come to convince the world of righteousness. Whew. 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 How is he going to do that? If you know that he is righteous, then you know that everyone who does righteousness is born of him. God's made you and I signs and wonders. We're supposed to be a light to the world. We're supposed to be salt to the earth. Is there a contrast? Is there a difference between us and the rest of the world? Was there, I mean, there was a contrast and difference between Jesus and the rest of the world. Are we his followers? Yes. <laughs> Is there a contrast and a difference between the Holy Ghost and the spirit of disobedience? Well, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of obedience. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Satan is the spirit of disobedience. Holy Spirit is the spirit of obedience. He's here to help you. Get happy. He's here, he's here to help you. 
with the weapons of your warfare that are not carnal but are mighty through God to stop that imagination. Shut that imagination down. Somebody said, well, just keep getting harassed. Go to prayer. I just keep getting mentally harassed. Just go to prayer. Well, I went to prayer. Well, go to prayer longer. Well, I went to prayer longer. Well, just fast and pray. Watch what happens. I think I'll be broken off of you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody says, well, I keep falling into this sin. I keep falling into this trap. I, I can help you with that. Let me just tell you something. This. Let me say this. If you keep falling into a trap of sin, you want to do something so that that trap doesn't get you anymore. Because as long as that trap gets you and it continues to go on, it will become stronger and stronger. And if you die, continually falling into that tr trap, you will die in your sin. You will die in your sin. Listen to me. Therefore, <laughs> you want to find a place where you can stand up against whatever that is and say no to it. No. You want to find a place of divine power and authority that says, no, I'm not yielding my members as servants unto sin anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. You know, Roman, Paul laid it out in Romans chapter 6. He laid out that contrast. He said, you once were the servants of sin. Now you're the servants of righteousness. You once had yield your members to unrighteousness. Now yield your members to righteousness. Are you with me? Can I read that to you real quick? I'm not going to get done. I'm just going to quit. I'm going to lay hands on you again. I'm going to pray for anybody who's sick and diseased in their body. Some people are sick and diseased because of the demon spirit. I prayed for people to get totally healed. And then they leave and they go back and participate with the same thing that opened the door to that sickness in the first place. And then they wonder why the sickness came back upon them. And then they start questioning because Satan is a deceiver. And then they start, Satan starts deceiving them, telling them, well, they never got healed. It was just they were all... Whatever, you know, excited. And then this, just, just, Satan will disqualify and discredit God, God in every possible way that he can. He's a liar and deceiver. Romans chapter 6. Come on, get happy. Come on, get happy. Come on, get happy. Everybody do this. Well, can you, control. Wow, can, major. Wow, that is great that you can do that. I'm a, that is amazing. Just watch control, dexterity, motor, sensory skills. Amazing. It really is amazing when you think about it. Now do this. Some of you don't have that ability. And then what if you can, what if you can do that into the point of, into, to the point of, you're, you're really yielding to the Holy Spirit saying, Lord, I want your joy, Holy Ghost. I want your fruits, your evidence. And now it really becomes not just something in your face, but something in your heart, in your spirit, in your disposition. And then it goes from your heart and your disposition to an atmosphere. <laughs> Hallelujah. And now it becomes tangible. You can even feel it, that glory of his presence. Because it's coming out of you like a river. But first, it's got to be a wellspring satisfying your soul. <laughs> if you would turn every time that you are faith, that you're faced with the point of decision and allow the Holy Ghost to be a wellspring on the inside of you, you'd make the right decision every time. If you would give yourself to continually feeling the goodness, feeling the love, feeling the joy, your entire life would be different. Every decision that you make, every interaction that you make, your ability, that is the place where you begin to grow and mature in the things of God. That's a place where you begin to become profitable. Somebody's like, everybody's waiting, waiting for another day. They're waiting for another day, waiting for another day. When is that going to happen? The day's never going to happen until you believe it and do it. Right? Because when you were in that place 
where the Holy Spirit was tugging on your heart, where you knew that you needed Jesus, that all you need to do is call upon his name, that you were going to give your life over to the king, that your life was going to change, you were never going to be the same ever again. You made a statement. You stepped out and you did something. You began to participate with God by actions and by, by verbalization. You confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And you believed in your heart that God raised and from the dead. For with the mouth, confession was made unto salvation. And with the heart, you believed unto righteousness. Huh? Well, then the rest of it works the same way. Amen. You say, I want, to, I want to start walking in joy. I want to know joy. I want to know abundant life. Then you've got to participate with abundant life. You've got to participate with joy. Why participate with demon spirits that produce the sorrow? Because that's all you've known is sorrow. And their influence is great when you're not living in the glory. Their influence and their pull. They're like voices in the dark calling from far, far away. They have no influence, have no pull on you. You just want to shut off. Just shut that off. Close the door. Close the window. I'm tired of hearing that coyote yap all night. Where's my gun? Hallelujah. I'm calling the fire of God down on you tonight. I'm just getting you ready. I'm calling the fire of God down on you. I'm calling the fire of God down on you. Somebody, somebody said, what do you mean? I'm calling the fire of God down. Jesus is the one who baptizes in the Holy Ghost and fire. When I call the fire of God, you want to see the fire of God? Showed up for the first time when God was leading Israel out of Egypt. Father came in his fire cloud of glory. When the fire came down after that the temple was ready and the sacrifice was laid in order, the fire came down. The fire came down to consume the sacrifice that was upon the altar so that everything about the people of God and that community and that temple and that sanctuary and the vessels and every part of it was His and belonged to Him and it could have nothing else to do with anything profane. I'm calling the fire of God down on you. Huh? Uh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Paul said, we've all drink of that spiritual rock that followed them in the wilderness. He said that in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Jesus Christ is that rock. We speak to the rock and the water comes out. We're talking about the water of the Holy Ghost. We speak to the rock and say, Lord Jesus, give me the Holy Ghost. Lord Jesus, fill me with your spirit. So Paul says, be continually filled with the spirit. Well, we, we, would, we, we, would, we would, would be willing to obey that? Would we just simply be willing to obey that? He says, rejoice evermore. <laughs> he, he tells us, rejoice uh, always. And again, I say rejoice. Well, why won't we obey that? Why do we have these crazy concepts and notions and ideas of other things when we, that we're going to do other things when we simply won't obey the simple, fundamental first things about love, loving Him and having a first love for Him. And when you do, you love everybody around you. Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing. When you love Him, you love everybody around you. When you don't love you around you, there's a, there's a question about your love for Him. That's what John said. He said, how can you say you love Him when you hate your brother? How can you say you love Him whom you have not seen when you hate your brother whom you have seen? And remember, in the Bible, there's no, you know, middle road. <laughs> It's, it's, either, it's either light or darkness. It's either God or Satan. It's either love or hate. But we want a gray area. <laughs> you know, I don't hate them, but I don't love them. That doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Either you're allowing the powers of darkness and circumstances and situations of light to fill you with hate, or you're allowing the power of the Holy Ghost to fill you with a divine love, a love that does not belong to any earthly realm. It only belongs to God. And you don't have to wait till you leave this life and step over into heaven to experience that love. That love is available right now. And when that love comes, joy is there. And when that joy comes, love is there. It's a package deal. It's a package. Huh? Huh? So I said, I want joy unspeakable. Well, what do you, what would you, if you had the view, I want you to paint a picture. You're not an artist. Okay, paint a picture in your mind of what joy unspeakable and full of glory looks like. Just do that for a minute. 
Imagine what that is looking like. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Imagine what that looks like. If you have a compact mirror, pull it out and say, is that, and look at yourself and go, was that what I was imagining? Like, is that, was that what I was imagining? We, we, um, we, uh, we, see that mirror? Have face on one side, one side. And just, you know what you need to do? A great, you know, a great, let me just tell you about, that's beautiful. Let me tell you about, I got a great idea for that. Uh, this would be a great beauty aid, you know, instead of the powder thing. Like you have the powder thing there, right? Is that not the powder thing? Well, that would be almost it. Like you had one of these, you know, and on one side it's got the little powder deal, right? And the little whatever it is that the girls do with the thing. You know? <laughs> So you can check yourself out right there. Well, what you need down here, instead of the powder and the little dilly that you put the powder on with, right? What you need is a picture when you were absolutely baptized in the Holy Ghost and caught away in glory. And where that one event, just, oh, God, you're so glorious. Wow. <laughs> Woo. You just caught away and it's, wow. Oh, Lord, I can't believe what you've done. And you take a picture of that, and then you can look at that, and you can look at yourself, and then you can get yourself adjusted. You get yourself adjusted. You make those adjustments. Amen. Amen. You make the adjustments. You can make the, because it's within the framework of our own will. It's in the framework of your own will. You listen to me. People want God to come down from heaven, jerk them around, fill them with joy. He already came down from heaven. He's not going to jerk you around. But by your request, he'll flood your soul with glory. Divine. With glory. Divine. With glory. Divine. With glory. Divine. So that's why I say, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. That's why Paul said, don't be unwise, but be wise. Redeeming the time for the day is evil. Huh? Don't be drunk with wine wherein is excess. People getting drunk, I'm going to tell you right now. You get intoxicated, you practice intoxication, drunkenness. Paul said, if a, bro if a person calls himself a brother and they practice intoxication, have no association with them whatsoever that the name of the Lord Jesus doesn't be blasphemed. Let me just tell you, you practice intoxication, you know what? You're not going to be able to receive the things of the Spirit. They are two opposite realms. It's Satan trying to imitate the realm of the Holy Ghost that they had on the day of Pentecost when they all came out and people thought they were drunk. They said, we're not drunk as you suppose. We're drunk in another way. So don't be drunk with wine wearing in his excess, but be drunk with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Spirit speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart unto God, giving thanks always for all things. Why don't we simply obey that? What's wrong with that? Why not have the power of God? Is there any power of God available on earth to have these things? Are you real? Yes, he's real. Yes, there is power of God to have these things. But you have to want them. You have to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I'm talking about the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, if I cast out devils by the spirit of the Lord, by the Holy Ghost, then the kingdom of God has come to you. That's a, that is a revelation of power. I'm telling you, the kingdom of God, Paul said it like this. The kingdom of God is not in meat and drink. It's not in all your religious functions. It's not in all your ideas. The kingdom of God is in righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. You've been translated from kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the dear son. That's happened, Colossians 1, 13. That's salvation. So why is it that we, that we have been, we've given this glorious opportunity to function, flow, and operate in the Holy Ghost, to move with God, to have these rivers of life? And so then we come under the influence of earthly things, worldly things, worldly cares, demon spirits, and we live over here hating, despising, critical, sorrowful, sad, Hungry, thirsty for something in the world to, to stuff inside. And it isn't a spiritual Twinkie. It's far worse than that. It's spiritual crap mm -hmm. to try not to be too graphic. It's eaten from the sewer. Should I break it down some more? It's eating corruption. True. 
Oh, I just can't live with that. I've got to have it. Well, I understand cannibals have developed a taste for human flesh. We are planning in June 2014 to be in Iria Jaya, in Jarapura. There's cannibals down there. They lust in a different way when they see your elbow. It's like a soup bone right there. It's going to be a soup, good soup bone. And not lusting for anything else, but why, how you taste in the pot. Is they file their teeth. And thinking about adding your head to their collection. And what you're going to look like when they shrink it down in the, with the various chemicals that they use. But I don't have any taste for that. Do you have any taste for that? <laughs> We don't live in that kind of a realm, do we? Well, how about if you live in the heavenly realm? Huh? And you continually feast on those good things that pertain to life and godliness. Whew. Mm -hmm. When you're walking in the love and the joy and peace, you know, what? Sorrow? Sadness? Hate? Strife? Iniquity? Eh. This is worse than thinking about a cannibal. He would think that it's terrible and unjust for the Lord to send sinners to the eternal torture chamber. All terribly unjust. What a horrific idea. What a horrific thought. You don't understand. Sin to Father is more horrific to Him participating with any iniquity or any human spirit is more horrific to Him than the thought of someone burning in an eternal torture chamber is to us. It's relative positions based upon different perspectives and life situations. God in Him is life and no darkness at all. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Father, fill these people up with joy right now. I pray, everyone who's willing to receive, let them step in a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Everyone who's willing to receive, let them be baptized right now in the Holy Ghost and the fire. Lord Jesus, we ask you for a drink from the rock. We speak to you, Lord Jesus. You know, you could be in a wilderness and you can talk to the rock and the water come out, refresh your soul. He wants to refresh you right now. He wants to make you whole right now. <laughs> Jesus has come to, con the Holy Ghost has come to convince the world of righteousness. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit has come to convince the world of judgment. Mm -hmm. The prince of this world is judged. Mm -hmm. Christ Jesus was proven to be righteous. Up from the grave he arose. He came in the power of resurrection life. Mm -hmm. The resurrection is proof of his righteousness. Mm -hmm. The cross, convincing to the world mm -hmm. of judgment against sin. The resurrection, the proof of righteousness. Satan cast out of this world, the proof of God's judgment. Or rather, Satan being cast out, proof of God's righteous judgment. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that every person in here is going to start participating with you. Yes. I'm, I'm closing. I'm trying to close. Make sure. You want joy evermore? You ain't going to participate with it today. You're going to have to participate. <laughs> want the word of knowledge working in your life? Start participating with the word of knowledge. It's the word of God. It's the Bible. Get the word in you. Get the Bible in you.
have a friend of mine, what he does is participate with the word of knowledge as he goes to prayer until the Lord gives him something. He's a preacher, so there's, it's not limited. Well, I've got to go. Father, hurry quickly. Give me something quickly. I've got to go to work in 30 minutes. Or I'm going to sleep in an hour. Edith goes to prayer, prays till the word of knowledge comes. That's where it began. But now it's strong, much stronger. Now he knows how to function and flow more perfectly with it. So he just says, Lord, give me a word of knowledge for this person. And it comes. But it didn't start there. He participated with it by giving himself to sowing to the things of the Spirit. Does that seem, does that seem wonderful, fantastic? It's not something that you want. To function in miracles, signs and wonders. Well, I think it's far more wonderful to function in love. But you have to give yourself to that. You have to participate with it. You know what's the first thing you got to do? You got to deal with the unforgiveness in your heart. Because as long as you've got unforgiveness and hate and bitterness inside of you, you got problems with people, it, it is a blockade. It runs a blockade against you from loving anyone perfectly. You know how our love is made perfect? I know how our love is made perfect. Because I did, not because I distilled it out of my own experience or read it in some library. I understand how love is made perfect from the scripture. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. I'll finish that verse of scripture, for as he is, so are we in this world. But what we have, what it starts off with, is we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love. He that dwells in love, are you listening to me? Do you got to participate with that? Do you got to go into a cave, hide away? I don't want any human influence. If I have any human influence, then I'm gonna, it's going to breach this thing of me dwelling in love. No, no, no. <laughs> God's going to sit you right down in the midst of the problem and show you how to love. He, he's going to sit you right down in the middle of everybody hating you and pointing fingers at you and accusing you. And all the rest of the mess that goes on in everyday life. And he's going to show you how to dwell in love so that you might dwell in God. And herein is how your love is made perfect. Is that pretty cool? Huh? Anybody else know that verse of scripture? Huh? First John chapter? Huh? Huh? What? Mm. Mm. Whoa. These are, tre are those treasures to you? Are they the ways of life to you? Are they the paths of life? Or are you going to make it up as you go? Well, I kind of remember what God said. He said, uh, we should not eat it, neither touch it. No, he didn't say you should not eat it, neither touch it. Are you with me? I, 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 I. Well, God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, you be like him, knowing good and evil. Now, because I don't understand it, I get overthrown. I get my face overthrown. Are you, can you hear me? Hello, testing, one. <laughs> Test. Is these, is, these, is these words of life to you? Are they words of life? Yes. Whether you're going to be sick, diseased, tormented, afflicted, oppressed, and there's no getting out of it until you obey the word of God. How can you obey something you don't know? Huh? 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 Look, dear people, there's a lot of folks in here with some pretty powerful degrees. Highest degrees that men can give to other men on this earth. We put a lot of time into that. Twelve years of school, first grade through high school, four years undergrad. Huh? Right? Five, six, seven, eight, nine years of graduate school. Huh? That's a lot of participation, isn't it? How many years are you in now? Are you in five right now? Grad? And, and we're praying one or two more to go? We're 
praying only one more. I mean, you know what? You're not going to get the PhD until you got it, huh? Or, or listen, you can, fly with a, you can fly by the seat of your pants with an MD after you cram your head full of so much knowledge in such a short period of time. But, um, you know, there's a certain PhD disciplines. You ain't getting, you're not getting the degree until you do the program to a professor satisfaction. And now what, we just want to, the, the Lord a carrot or whatever? I mean, you know what? Our bone, put it that way. What, are you listening to me? Yeah. Wait a minute. Show yourself, study to show yourself approved okay. under God. Are you approved under God? Oh, well, we, well, he's not deserving of that kind of commitment. <laughs> you know, right? Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. If you're a baseball star, we get excited about you. Lord Jesus, if you're just a quarterback in the football team, we'd be really happy. I'm whoo! Sorry, Lord, you're not a football player, you're not a baseball player. You're just the Lord. And you're in an unseen realm besides that. Can I get after this thing? Can I bust this thing upside the head? Huh? Can I make it to where it's no longer that these things that have hindered you and held you back no longer have power and sway over you? Can, I? Can you get excited about Jesus every day? Or do you get excited about Jesus once a month? Huh? When you feel real sad, is that when you open up the Bible and read? Just read a couple of verses, just preach a couple of passages, a couple of chapters. Somebody say, you're being cynical. Well, I'd like to be worse than that. I'd like to get up in your space and say, this is what you're doing. Stop doing that. That's wrong. Because you're not hungry for the Word. You got yourself a problem because Jesus is the Word. And the Word reveals Jesus. The volume of the book is written down. If you're not hungry for the things of the Spirit, you got yourself a problem. We want to get you hungry. We want to get you delivered tonight. Huh? If you wake up irritable and grumpy, you got yourself a problem. So my blood sugar is low. That ain't nothing to do with your blood sugar. It has to do with a spiritual condition, and the spiritual condition has caused your blood sugar to have some response. Huh? Father, in the name of Jesus. I was I was praying for some people last time. I'm closing with this. This is my fifth close, I think. What happened to my Bible? I've lost the word. <laughs> my wife said, you can bless someone with this. That could be very dangerous. You know, I could add this to someone and they go, wow, he's picking on me. Does anybody want this? The first hand that goes up. I'm going to give it to you, sweetie, right back over here. Just a reminder. It's what you're supposed to look like all the time. Happy face. Amen. That's right. You just look at the happy face you're reminding, and then you look at your face. <laughs> and, if you, and if you say, well, let's pretend. <laughs> Well, I, praise God for truth. You know what I'm saying? Praise God for truth. And we don't want to be pretending anymore. We want to be coming from your heart. <laughs> and, and if you're being led by the Spirit, it's going to come from your heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, <clears throat> the, Lord talks, the Lord spoke to me. Um, see, I prayed for some people on Sunday night. And, and um, you know, and there's a number of times I've prayed for folks and just didn't really feel the power of God that, um, that I know is supposed to be being experienced when someone's being healed of an incurable disease. I've seen people healed of incurable diseases or things that take creative miracles. Without a, without a whole lot of manifest glory of God. But there's always a manifest glory of God. And the Lord spoke to me um, out of Matthew, I mean, forgive me, out of Micah chapter, out of Micah chapter 6. I just want to, I want to read this to you real quickly because it's very, very important for you to, to consider this.
I just, I, I just feel a little check about sharing this with you. And um, the, the Holy Ghost wants to encourage you. He just wants to give you faith to know and realize that everything that you read in the Bible, every promise is for you. But you're going to have to also understand that sin and disobedience has a wage with it, has a consequence. Sickness and diseases are in those consequences. Affliction and torments are in those consequences. And the wages of sin is death. There's a consequence to sin and iniquity. If there's any key to wisdom that you want to grab a hold of, if you would just live by that one wisdom principle, that no matter how attractive sin may appear to you, it's going to have a consequence. And you have to ask yourself, are you really willing to, are you really, are you really willing to suffer the consequence of sin? When there's a great reward in seeking the Lord. Thank you, Father, for your goodness. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 Thank you, living God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 The Lord Jesus wants to heal you right now. You have sickness in your body, he heal you right now. Torment in your spirit, he heal you right now. Just let him touch you. Just let, your, let the Lord touch you. Let him touch you. You've had sin in your life, he'll cleanse you right now. You have strongholds in your life, He'll break off the yoke right now. Just let him touch you. Let him heal you. Let him heal you. Let him fill you up with the goodness. Let him strengthen you by the spirit in your inner being. Let him make you strong right now. Let the Holy Ghost build you up right now. Oh, blessed is your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. Lord, I thank you that every person in this place be able to shine as lights into the world everywhere they go. They'll be overwhelmed with your joy and overwhelmed with your love. Yes. The world around them will see yes. a convincing result of a transformed life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, Thank you living God. Thank you. Thank you, living God. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Sickness and disease, virus. Flus, right now I break the power of it, right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in the name of the living God. Right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. Right now in Jesus' name. I speak change into your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. I speak change into your life. Right now in the name of Jesus. I speak change into your life. Right now, in the name of Jesus, to speak change into your life. Right now. Change. 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 Right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Change. Change. Right now. Right now. Change. From death to life. Change. Right now. From sorrow to joy. 
right now in the name of Jesus. Change. Changed. Change. Changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From joy to joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. Change. From peace to peace that passes understanding. Changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. No more imaginations. I break the power and the authority of a mind without any controls. An earthly, sensual mind overrun by every imagination and every unholy thing and every fearful thing. I break the power of that right now in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command you right now. Receive the mind of Christ right now in Jesus' name. Be clothed. <laughs> Be clothed right now. Hallelujah. Be clothed with Christ. Put you on, therefore, the Lord Jesus Christ and make no more provision for the flesh to fulfill it. its lust. Be clothed with the glory of God. Be clothed with majesty and splendor. Be clothed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With goodness and mercy. Hallelujah. Live in the goodness and mercy. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you touch Joshua's body. Right now in the name of the living God. Now in the name of Jesus. Strengthened by the Spirit. Strengthened right now. I command you to be strengthened right now. Strengthened right now. Strengthen right now. Strengthen right now in Jesus' name. Those of you who've accepted things in your life that are not of God, that does not belong to divine health, the divine blessing, you renounce that right now. You reject that thing right now. You accepted things into your body, some kind of sickness, some kind of disease, some kind of state, something other than what is described in the Bible. Do not receive a lie. The word of God is truth. To believe something else and accept something else and to declare something else is to believe a lie. To accept a lie. Be valiant and stand up and begin to declare the word of God as active and revealed in your life. Be valiant no matter what the circumstance or situation is. Rise up in the authority of the living God. From this day forward, I commission you in Jesus' name to walk in divine power and authority, to live out a life baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the living God, describe yourself as one who has rivers of living water gushing up out of them. Describe yourself as one who has joy unspeakable and full of glory. Describe yourself as one who lives under the reign of the Prince of Peace, walking in peace that passes understanding. Describe yourself as that one who dwells in, in love, who dwells in God, dwelling in love, and there knowing the love of Christ that passes knowledge. You're filled up with all the fullness of God. Describe yourself as the one who's healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Describe yourself and live out a life that rejects and refuses every imagination that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and His obedience. Serve the devil noticed 
that he's not playing games in your mind anymore because you're not listening. You listen to me. Come on now. Listen, I don't want to get specific. I can get specific because I've got the word of God at work right now in me. I can get very specific and very detailed right now. I'm not going to do that. I'm not, God's not into in embarrassing anyone. Just hear. We don't want to have to give you shock treatment to get you to hear. Just say, I'm not letting imaginations run wild in my mind anymore. I'm not going to believe un and, and listen to and agree with unholy thoughts. They have nothing to do with reality. And where I find myself right now in God in walking out His divine purposes and growing and living in the Holy Ghost. Growing and living in the spirit of truth. Wow. Imagine living in God. Dwelling in God. The beauty of it. You know how many people you got to forgive continually to stay and dwell in love? Huh? <laughs> to forgive them from your heart? God gives us the capacity to do that. All you got to do is be willing. Participate. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying something so strong. Participate. And if you can't participate with a smile, how are you ever going to participate with a word of knowledge? If you can't participate with a cheerful heart, how will you ever participate in the gifts of healing? If you can't participate with just saying, I'm going to love people, I'm going to hug them, I'm going to bless them. How can you ever participate with signs, wonders, and miracles? Right. Really good. Thank you, Lord. The fruits of the Spirit are absolutely connected mm -hmm. with the gifts of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus said, when you stand praying, believe that you received those things that you have said and asked. Mm -hmm. Even to the point of mountain moving faith, mm -hmm. nothing impossible. But he says, remember, while you're standing there, if you have unforgiveness, mm -hmm. you've got to forgive. That's where the fruits of the Spirit right. and the gifts of the Spirit have to both be there right. at work right. for God's results take place in your life. I have a hold of something here tonight. I've got something. I gra I've grabbed a hold of something. I've got something that you have. I've got a hold of things that have tormented you and harassed you. I've got a hold of things that have held you back and kept you from participating in the gifts of the Spirit. I got them. I got a hold of it. The hindrance. I'm asking you tonight if you, want, if you want to go free from the thing and the influence of the thing. I've got a hold of it. You listen to me. Because you remove all the hindrances out of the way. You remove all the distraction out of the way. You move, remove all of the, of, the, of the interference of the enemy out of the way. And God's people from day one are prophesying. From day one, word of knowledge, miracles, gifts of healing. Day one, in tongues, interpretation of tongues. Day one, flow of the Holy Ghost. Rivers of living water. Day one, rivers of living water. Day one. Instead of sitting around for years and years and years and years and years growing colder instead of hotter. I've called the fire of God down upon your life. And what in doing so, breaking every unholy influence. I've called the fire of God down upon the city. This city needs you to go everywhere preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. Declaring to these captives, go free. People in prison, go free. People that are tormented, afflicted, oppressed, go free. There are many that will not hear, but there are also many who will hear. Many of the, those who will not hear are those who already have They've been inoculated with religion. They have a resistance against the Holy Ghost. They got just enough knowledge about the Bible for the enemy to use it against them. Because there's never been a change of heart. I believe that many of you are going to be thrust into great harvest fields tomorrow with your families. The most important thing you can do 
is get filled up with love. Get filled up with joy. Because you might be joy and loving all the way down the road as you drive there, but as soon as you get up to the front door, all of a sudden an oppressive thing comes over you. Because the enemy's been able to influence you more than God. And when that's happening, word of knowledge can't function. When that's happening, the flow of the Holy Ghost can't function. Too many people have made a lifestyle of listening to the voices of Satan. They've made it a lifestyle. And I'm here to break that power tonight. I'm here to break that power tonight. I have an anointing. I have an anointing to break that power. God, the Holy Ghost, will give me an anointing to break that power here tonight. He breaks every fetter, breaks off every chain of bondage and gives to us the victory. Uh, he did that for you. I know. That. I know. It's beautiful. Hallelujah. Two months ago, oppressed, tormented. Today, rejoicing and jumping around yeah. radical review. Praise God. And you're never gonna lose it. No. It's just gonna grow. Amen. It's gonna mature. I agree. That's totally true. I have watched many people where the Lord simply told them a very simple thing to do and they refused to do it and they went into a prison at the moment they disobeyed. They went into prison. And they justified their state or were never willing to really listen to the conviction of the Holy Ghost, convincing work of the Holy Ghost, and repent, which was the only means by which to get them out of that prison. Tonight the yoke is broken. Tonight I've broken that yoke. Tonight I break the yoke of the afflictions of, 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 of fever and disease and torment, flus and viruses. Tonight, by the Spirit of the living God, I'm calling you into a place of revival. I'm calling you into a place of seeking God. <laughs> Father's got a reward for you. It's glory and majesty and honor. And when this glory is seen upon you, this glory is in His house, the nations will run unto you because of the glory. But you're going to have to seek the Lord while it may be found. Call upon him while he's near. Let the wicked forsake his thoughts. And the unrighteous man his ways. For the Lord says, your thoughts are not my thoughts. Your ways are not my ways. That's what he says, Isaiah 55. Will you let these yokes be broken? Will you let these vain imaginations, these unholy thoughts, these things that create broken relationship, broken covenant, division, strife, fear. God, the Holy Ghost has never, never one, one moment in all of his existence ministered fear. Never one time, never one time has he ever ministered doubt. Never has he ministered uncertainty. Never, never has he participated in criticism or any kind of unholy thought. That's the realm of imagination, unholy imagination, vain imagination. Break that thing now. I'm breaking it now. I want you to receive. I'm talking to you. I, I, I've got a hold of it. You've got to say yes. You've got to say yes. You've got to repent. You've got to say, Father, I'm sorry. Father, forgive me. It's me. The man of God is talking about me. He doesn't have to read my mail to convince me I'm not going to be so stubborn and hard-hearted that I've got to have the details broken out for me for I know that I'm the person. And I want it no more in my life. I want it no more in my life. How easy is that? I want you to stand with me. The Lord's got a simple remedy of protection for you. He says, be clothed with humility and walk in love.
What a divine empowerment. What, a, what an important, what an important thing. An expression of the Holy Spirit that needs to be in our life right now. Jesus, Jesus right now. Lord Jesus, do this miracle for these people standing in here. Do this miracle. Do this miracle. Just lift your hands towards heaven. Do this miracle. To this miracle. To this miracle. I break off this torment. I break off this affliction right now. I break it off of you right now. I break that affliction off, that yoke. I break it now. I break off that yoke of torment where you participate with unholy things. You participate with sorrow. You participate with sadness. You participate with things that belong to this world rather than participating with those things that belong to the Holy Ghost. All you got to do is resist the devil, steadfast in the faith, and he'll flee away. All you got to do is resist sorrow and sadness and it'll go. All you got to do is resist condemnation and lies. All you got to do is resist those things that belong to fear and suspicion. Not participate with it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Rababa sikiti atoloro. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. If there's any time that the demonstration of the power of the Holy Ghost needs to be seen in the earth, it's right now. And the only place that that's possible is in the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that believes and accepts the Holy Ghost and His work of power and grace. Right now in Jesus' name. Lord, we seek you right now. We call upon your name right now. We ask you, Lord, let your fire burn in this place. Let your fire burn in this place. Let your fire burn in this place. Father, I thank you for such boldness right now. Boldness in the Holy Ghost. Boldness in the faith. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Boldness in the faith. Boldness in the faith. Jenny, come here. Put your hands towards heaven. Jesus' name. Now just let heaven fill you. Let heaven fill you. Let heaven fill you. Let heaven fill you. Just let heaven fill you. Just let heaven fill you. The way you deal with every bad thing, to get rid of every bad thing, you let every good thing come. Good comes, bad has to go. 
It's like when you turn a light on in the room, darkness has to leave. I have this room in my house that's just so dark that you can't even find the light switch. It's a terrible situation. I pray that every one of you know how to turn the light switch of his presence on in your life. Simply by yielding yourself to him. His presence and his glory fills the earth wants to come saturate you, but you've got to yield to him. You've just got to yield. Say, I'm yours. Do, what, do with me as you will. And I know what he will, so it's not like, it's abstract, you know. Do with me what you will. I may be, I may be angry. I may be mad. I may be, no, you don't have to worry about that. Do with me what you will. You know, it's going to be love and joy. It's going to be peace. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. It's going to be grace. It's going to be mercy. It's going to be boldness. It's going to be confidence. Amanda, Jesus has an abundant life for you, but you have to take it. You have to receive. So let your hands towards heaven. Has an abundant life for you. But the world will try to take it away. Jesus said, I've got a peace that the world can't take away. He said, there may be tribulation in the world, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. And the good cheer is the reason we can be of good cheer that he's overcome the world, because we're in him. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of Jesus. Now, in Jesus' name, I break off every imagination, every, inf every unholy influence now in Jesus' name. Receive this goodness of God. Receive this place where you can be baptized, living in His goodness and His glory. Be filled with the Spirit. Receive right now. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive right now. Huh. Receive right now. Receive. Receive. When the Holy Ghost comes, every unholy spirit has to go. When the Holy Spirit comes, every unholy spirit has to go. Just that simple. So just receive. Brava sikiti antana na makete visipatai. Now in the name of Jesus, everything that belongs to rejection and hurt, I break the power of it off of you right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask you to baptize Amanda in the Holy Ghost in fire right now. Lord, I ask you, let your fire burn right now in this life. Let your fire burn right here in this life. Let your fire burn right here. Jesus' name. And now in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, receive. Right now, receive. Out of your belly flows the rivers of the Holy Ghost. Right now, receive. 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 Is it? Right now, receive. Right now, receive. Right now. Right now, receive. Right now, receive. Right now, receive. Right now, right now, receive. 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 Somebody said, who is he talking to? You. Right now, receive. People are looking around. Who is he talking to? You. Receive. Receive. Just receive the blessing of the Lord. Just receive the blessings of the Lord. Receive right now the blessings of the Lord. 
All spiritual blessings are yours right now. You can receive them. All spiritual blessings are yours right now. Receive them. Alastakaya. Right now in the name of Jesus. Receive them. Receive them. Receive right now. Receive right now. Receive. Somebody asked me one time, says, why is it sometimes you shout and yell? Sometimes I shout and yell because I feel resisting spirits. So I just shout and yell. Because there's resisting evil spirits. It's as though they occupying your hearing. So I'm talking louder than them. Come at this thing. Receive right now. I said receive gladness and joy. I didn't say see, receive sorrow and sighing. I said receive gladness and joy. Behold, we have good news of glad tidings. We announce unto you good news, joyful news. Hey, hey, where are you going? Where are you, go where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? You can't leave. You ain't half broken through. Just stay right there till you touch heaven. I'm helping you touch heaven. You go home and won't even know how to do it. Won't even know how to touch heaven. You get home, they sit at home. Oh, God, where are you at? Oh, God, ah, I don't feel anything. Where's my prayer list? I'm helping you touch heaven so that you can touch heaven for the rest of your life. Then you don't have to live in affliction and torment and sorrow and sighing and being upset and feeling unwanted and feeling rejected. And allowing disease to overrun your life and allowing discouragement to overrun your life because you've got the helper, the comforter right there all the time and you just haven't realized how to yield to him and let him touch you, how to receive from him. Because too many voices of this world has been allowed to occupy your thinking and you've gone with those things that they've suggested rather than living by the word of the Lord, which leads us right directly to the works of the Holy Spirit. And the things that God wants to fill us with. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Isn't that good? You're not leaving here tonight. Anything less than baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, should you be willing. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, I break off every fetter, every chain off of you. I bring you up out of your prison in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, in Jesus' name, obey me. I'm certain that you won, otherwise you wouldn't have been here. You wouldn't have come tonight. I saw you here on Sunday night. I didn't see you receive a single thing from heaven, but nonetheless, I saw you here. So I figure you come again tonight. You truly must be earnest. You truly must want these things of God. I'll make sure you get them. Now in Jesus' name, right now in the name of the living God. There you go. That's better. That's better. That's better. Okay. There you go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come up, Papa Cati, step up. Keep it up, Papa Cati, come up, Papa Cati, sit here. Come up, Papa. Keep it up, Papa Cati, come up, Papa Cati, sit here. Come up, Papa Cati, come up, Papa Cati, sit here. Come up, Papa Cati, come up, Papa Cati, sit here. We just hear people seeking the Lord. We just hear seeking the Lord. We just see here seeking Him. We just hear seeking Him. We're just here seeking him. We're just here seeking him. We're just here yielding to him. We're, 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 huh. They that come to the Lord must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We're just here seeking him.
I had somebody, I had somebody email me and say, you know, I just don't want to come to church anymore because I'm tired of being a hypocrite. I like sin. I said, well, you know what? One second after you die, you're not going to like sin anymore. All you're saying to me is, sin is worth it to you to miss out on Jesus now and in the future. That's all you're telling me. Because he's got ample forgiveness and mercy to forgive you. And the power of God's got enough grace ministered to us by the Holy Ghost right now to teach us to walk in righteousness no matter how messed up we are. Satan is constantly handing out his identity to people. And they are, they're takers. When all the time God himself would give to us his identity. And everybody stands, not everybody, but seemingly most people stand in doubt wondering, can it be? The invitation Jesus has for you and me is come dwell in me, come abide in me. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask whatever you want and it will be, and it'll be given to you. I've watched as Satan come and touch people with various different kinds of abuses, violating circumstances, tragedy, and he marks them with it. And tonight, for the people that are in this place, I break off that mark. I break off that stronghold of Satan that has been applied to your life. We're trying to ruin you and give you an identity that will ultimately destroy your soul forever in a place called the lake of fire. People think God winks at sin. He does not. He commands everybody everywhere to repent. He's brought to us the blood that cleanses and the spirit of the living God that brings holiness to purity. See, if I, listen, when I'm in a Hindu nation, Here's what happens. If they sin one time, a Hindu sins one time, he has to spend 57, he or she, has to spend 57,000 life cycles as an insect. And no guru in Hinduism, no holy man in Hinduism has a remedy. So if I say, I have a remedy for your sin, the ears come right up. They're listening. Wait a minute. You have a remedy for my sin. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from your sin. Because Hinduism has no remedy except for 57,000 life cycles. And after 57,000 life cycles, you get to come back one more time, get another opportunity to see if you can advance into the realms of heaven. Because you cannot go into the realms of heaven unless you're holy. And they have no provision for holiness. I got your provision for holiness. And people sit in the Christian world and have no ears to hear how to be delivered from their sin. It's too bad, isn't it? Huh? Isn't it bad? A Hindu, Hindu comes, grabs hold of Jesus and finds out that there's a life-changing, nature-changing power of God for them. Changes their affections, their hearts, what they want. Now they find the power of godliness. They find the power of holiness. They find, find the power of the righteousness of God. The Western world is being overrun with apostasy. Dear people, look. Look around, see. Look around, see. Look around, see. Look. What our society has embraced over the past 30 to 40 years that could not have been being imagined by our grandparents' generation. When I was going to the University of West Florida many years ago, I was living with my grandmother. It would be... This would have been 1979. And she'd watch, I'd come in, she'd be watching the news. And she'd just sit there crying, weeping, sobbing. I said, Grandma, why are you sobbing? What's wrong? The world is so wicked. This is the news. 
Listen to this wickedness. It's a grandmother. Quit watching the news. You can't take it. Turn it off. Just stop listening to it. Well, how can the world be so wicked? How can the world be so wicked? Her daddy was a Quaker preacher. Migrated from Tennessee to Michigan when she was 10 years old. Always lived on the farm in rural America. She moved to the city. She's looking at all this stuff and going, what? What? What is this? Here we're in the city and anesthetized. Sin hardened the heart. You know what hardens the heart against? The Holy Ghost. Pharaoh is the great example of a hardened heart. Signs, wonders, and miracles of God. God pleading with him with great power and demonstration of his presence and person. Did not matter. He's not going to obey. He's not going to obey. I'm not going to obey. Come now. Come now. Come now. It's time for us to weep before the, between the porch and the altar for things like this. It's time for us to cry out to God and begin to pledge and vow ourselves to him and say, Lord, that's not going to be my heart. I'm going to be an obedient servant because you've given me the grace to do it. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to be what you want me to be. Father, not my will, but your will. I'm going to say for real. Father, who art in heaven, holy and sacred is your name. Your kingdom come. You will be done in me right now just like it is in heaven, in this earth. That's what I want. Is that going to be some rote, Religious something or other. The truth of the heart. That's what the Holy Ghost come to do. Make this truth on the inside. Jesus. Will you obey? Will you obey? Today, if you hear his voice, do you hear his voice? Today, if you hear his voice, do you hear his voice? Yes. Today, if you hear his voice, do you hear his voice? Yes. To harden not your heart. No. To unbelief. Today, if you hear his voice. Father, we thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that everyone sitting in this place will find themselves empowered by you to live as those who provide witness that you've been raised up from the dead and that we've been raised up together with you. Father, that everybody will see a light of your glory and of your person revealed in our life in such a way that it becomes like, as it were, a city set upon a hill that cannot be hid. Father, we thank you that the person of the Holy Ghost be so manifested in our life that only Jesus would be seen and we would truly be salt to the earth. Your evangels, your flames, your witnesses. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that out of this place would be raised up men and women of prayer. Those who will seek your face continually. Father, I pray, oh God, that out of this realm will be raised up people of the anointing. Men and women of the Spirit who know and, and live in this wonderful operation of the Holy Ghost. Those who know and understand 
how to function with you and flow with you and operate by your mighty power. Who do not yield their members. To unrighteousness. And he breathed on them, said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Spirit. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself to God as those that are alive from the dead, resurrection power. And your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall have no dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. In other words, you've been born of the Spirit. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey... His servants you are to whom you obey. If you obey sin, you the servant of sin. And the results will be death. If you obey God through obedience unto righteousness, well, we know what the end of that is, is everlasting life. For God, be thanked that you were once the servant of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart the form of doctrine which you, was delivered to you. Being now, being now free from sin, you now the servants of righteousness. I speak after the man, after the manner of men, because the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your members' servants to unrighteousness, unto iniquity, unto, even so now yield your, serv, your, your members' servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when we were the servant of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit then had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things are death. But now being made free from sin, you become the servants of God. And have, hallelujah, your fruits unto holiness. In the end, everlasting life. Unlimited life. Amen. Find a bunch of people around you, hug them, tell them you love them, bless them in Jesus' name.